Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. Welcome to Apostate News, where we deliver all the current news in the world of uh, Islam and all, and everything that is relevant to it. I didn't practice this. I have to practice this because, to make it that, perfect. But yeah. That was pretty much the worst intro to anything I've ever seen. That's that's uh, at least an opinion, so every feedback is appreciated. Uh, <laughs> David, how are you doing? Good, but I mean, here we, we're talking about Ali Dawa because he had to open his mouth. Um, but there's too much. There's too much to cover. There's there's like the, the the stories are just are just blasting us all day. We can't even cover them in live streams, man. We can't cover them in live streams, videos. It's too much. You got like every everything Andrew Tate posts or any interview they post with him. There's like seventy five different things to respond to. Then you've got uh, all the Dawa guys and all the stuff they're admitting, everything they've ever said about perfect preservation and mathematical miracles and scientific miracles is they're now admitting has been debunked. And so now they're scrambling to cover that stuff up. Then you've got all the political stuff. You have like the first, the first Muslim majority city in the United States, and they vote to ban pride flags and... So you've got this whole, wait a minute, you guys had the alliance, the far left and Islam, and, and we were asking the entire time, what are you thinking? You guys are not on the same side of much, except for uh, not liking certain other things in common. But other than that, you guys did not. You guys were on the polar opposites of certain issues. What did you think? Did you think they were going to support you this entire time? Did you think you were going to come out with uh, all this stuff and the, the, the people that you had been, you'd been defending their profit for the past two decades. Did you think that because you were defending their profit from criticism, they were going to come out and, uh, and support all this stuff? I didn't, but everyone else did. <laughs> I mean, they did. And, uh, and we were saying that, right? We, we were talking about that of forever. Course. Yeah, yeah. I've been, we, you know, I've been, uh, that's one of the most common things I've been saying all these, what I do not get it apart from we both oppose this other these other people for completely different reasons. We can, we oppose them for completely different reasons, but since we both oppose them, we will be united and act like we're on the same page. But during that same time, you would occasionally hear, there was a, there was a popular clip. They had like a behind the scenes uh, Muslim leader in, uh, it was, I believe it was in Australia. And there was a clip of him going, yes, yeah, so we have to, we have to carry on this, uh, this al alliance temporarily until we defeat other people. Then that alliance is going to break down and, uh, it's breaking down. So anyway, but long story short, we would have to be live all day, all night to get to, to cover all the stuff that's happening. It's so, it's so much. It's crazy. All day, all night, all day, all night, live streaming. Gonna talk about Ali Dawa. Uh. <laughs> gonna talk about holes in the narrative yeah no but seriously we haven't been saying that forever i have been saying the same thing you have been saying the same thing there is there's really no point in forming an alliance between progressives or even even regular liberals and and muslims you know a, a to create a socio-political alliance it's simply it is absurd because those two ideologies are complete polar opposites in terms of especially you know social matters and uh, morality and all of that and um i mean <laughs> and 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 they have been doing this for for many many years i knew exactly you knew exactly that uh, at the, in the first opportunity the muslim side would turn against the other and that is exactly what is happening right now and some people kind of perceive that as as the muslims um you know turning toward the the right or the conservatives and them embracing uh the muslims but that is also not really happening what is happening is that uh, some people on the on the right who are quite short-sighted um kind of try to form an alliance with this uh, islamist mindset uh gladly most conservatives at least i would say as, as far as i see it are still distant from the idea of um making an alliance with these with these islamists because they are aware of what Islamists want what they stand for, how they are opposed to um, to Western culture, to Western conservative culture, to Western Christian culture. Uh, unfortunately, it's very ironic that the that the atheist and the secular ones are not aware that Islam is even more opposed to their whole uh, worldview and standpoint. Maybe now they are slowly um, 
beginning to see it. Maybe now slowly they would they will get it. I don't know. And and, and it's interesting. I've even I've even seen people on the left going, it's weird seeing Muslims switch sides like this after all we've done. And it's like it's like they, they saw like Ilhan Omar and so on and thought, ah, this is this is the community that we're getting on our side. Uh, and they're finding out that it's not, and they're all surprised. It actually reminds me of, of Chris Rock when he was talking about, um, he was talking, this is way back in the day, but one of the circus tigers uh, went off and mauled, mauled its trainer. And Chris Rock says, and then everyone said, oh, that tiger went crazy. And he goes, no, nah, that tiger went tiger. So it's like the, the tiger was always like that. You would just, you would just, you know, gotten it on your side for some shows and stuff. it was still a tiger and uh so yeah, yeah if these i mean these just the the level of narcissism it takes to think oh we've thrown you guys a bone therefore this entire religion of 14 centuries that calls for our our horrible bloody death as soon as it gets in charge is going to really be their hearts are going to melt and they're going to be on our side like mm, mm, that is the stupidest thing i've ever heard in my life their hearts will be broken. So today we want to talk about a specific uh, topic that I picked because I decide what's uh, what's happening. And uh, we we actually had to pick, right? <laughs> like, what are we going to talk about? Like twenty seven things we could we could talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was actually brought to my attention by a different um, a different small YouTube channel, which was. Uh, I will I will remember that I was uh, going to give that channel a shout out for actually uh, reminding me of that. That's uh, oh yeah yeah, uh, drastic measures Islam is that the channel that actually brought this to my attention. I didn't see that before, but um, I still don't see it here. This okay. channel, this channel, drastic measures Islam is what brought this to my attention. Uh, somebody sent me a link to uh, a video that they made about uh, Ali Dawa where he basically admits that the scientific miracle in the Quran narrative is uh, complete nonsense. While he is talking about um, Andrew Tate and his reasons of being a Muslim and converting to Islam. And so then I, I decided to listen to the whole actual video where um, Ali Dawa reviews Andrew Tate and what he said in his recent interview about Islam. And oh, there he is. Look, drastic measures Islam is here in the, in the, in the live chat. Yep. Uh, very, very nice work, very nice compilation. So everybody subscribe if you want to. No, you are forced to subscribe. Um but by the way, that, that's interesting. So so you heard it from drastic measures. I haven't I haven't seen the the actual Ali Dawa video. Uh you sent me you sent me a message that he had said it, but I and then I saw the I saw what he actually said. Uh Derek from uh Christian channel, your brother in Christ, he posted it as a short. And then L I S O Elohim made a video about it that I watched earlier. But yeah, that's uh, so I've only seen the actual little part that they that where they showed what Ali Dawa said, which is my goodness, my goodness. This is I mean, it's people don't realize how huge it is to hear these Dais like Fareed saying when Fareed says that, yes, the claim that there was only one Quran, no variance anywhere. When he said that's a lie, that's huge. We we've, we've known it's a lie, but we're trying to. What does it take for you guys to admit that that was a lie? And he finally admits that it's a lie. And you've got these guys using these scientific miracles for years. It's like, what does it get you to? What does it take to get you to see that you've got some problems in your argument here? And they just out of nowhere, oh, it's it's been debunked. It's like, wait, what? Yeah, he also says explicitly it's been debunked. I mean, uh, we will we will watch the video and we will um. We will see him say that, but he clearly says that that the scientific miracles narrative has been debunked. And he also makes some some more revelations about how uh, Muslim proselytizers and Dawah people and uh, apologists basically think when it comes to converting to Islam. Let's go into this. Let's jump into it. Um, I want to watch. Uh, I, I just very quickly to the background. Andrew Tate recently had a major interview on this uh, channel, PDP or something like that. And uh, PDB, I don't know, whatever. And uh, there he had a second. <laughs> I was just thinking, a pedophile? What? <laughs> like, no, no, the, the, I don't know who those guys are, but they, they, seem, yeah. they seem they seem pretty pretty nice guys. They yeah, but nice guys. there he had a, he had an interview. In the, in, the, in the interview, there was a, a section where he talked about Islam and why he converted. And he mentioned several things that um, those Muslims who 
know about their religion and who paid attention became quite angry about and uh, tweeted because Andrew Tate says some really, really problematic things about his belief in God and, and Islam, uh, such things that would actually uh, you know, be kufr, that would be disbelief and make you a non-Muslim in the traditional Islamic uh, setting. Uh, <laughs> Al-Dawa is reacting to, to that and uh, trying to clear the air here. And we want yeah. to go through that. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, think about the situation these guys are in. These are the guys who, I mean, Muhammad Hijab, and so th these are the guys who propped him up and said, "You see, you see, we've got, we've got Andrew Tate. This is the proof, <laughs> uh, the proof." And there, it's not, it's not proof that Islam is true, but it's like the, it's like the success of Dawa. Do you see our Dawa's, our Dawa is working? All you naysayers who've been thinking that us going around insulting it and threatening everyone isn't going to melt people's hearts. You see, Andrew Tate. Um, and then to. and then and then he's blurting out all this stuff, which is like the I mean, he was actually in that video telling young men to have sex with lots of different women while you're young. So you so you develop experience and you can eventually see you can eventually develop the, the experience to tell a good girl from a from a bad girl and stuff like this. And they're like, Shh. You, you, you're right. We, we, you saw some Muslims saying, "What is this? What?" But these guys, these are the guys, Ali Dawa, Muhammad Hijab. These are the guys who are stuck defending Andrew Tate. Who, and they're like, "He's, he's, he's still new. He's still learning. Give him time." <laughs> and you, you've been pointing it out all along. And then you pointed out in the tweet when you saw Muslims complaining about him. You're like, "We were the ones saying, guys, he is not some sincere, devout Muslim. He." He is a convert of convenience. He had other things in mind because he was he literally just before his conversion, he said he thinks of choosing a religion like betting on the stock market. Like, yeah, yeah. what stock do I think is going to do best in the future? That's what I'm going to invest in. So he's just and then his description is, well, Islam is going to outlast everyone else because Islam is going to kill everybody. Islam is the one that will. This is his argument. Islam will kill everyone who gets in its way. Other people won't. Therefore, Islam is going to win. Not realizing, well, if you if that's your attitude, you you we're going to kill everyone. You're going to make enemies of everyone as well. So I'm not sure you're going to be the last one standing in in all of this mess. But that's his reasoning. It's not. It's not the closest thing you got to an actual argument was his. Uh, uh, I look at the evil of the world and I realize there must be an equal and opposite uh, uh, an opposite force. And that must be God. And I thought uh, when he first said it last year, I was like, that is incredibly sloppy, insanely sloppy philosophy. <laughs> Terrible argument. But we pointed it out and he's still using it, this this equal and opposite force. It's Notice, guys, if you don't understand the problem with that reasoning, there is a limited finite amount of evil. If Allah is the opposite of that, if he's the opposite of a limited, finite amount of evil, then he he's a limited, finite amount of whatever he is, God, good, if you want to call him. But he, the point is, it's 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 you're you're comparing him with the creation and a limited something, a limited amount of something in his creation, and saying he's the opposite of that. And uh, that's so dumb. That reminds me of of um, of difference religions and different religious beliefs like uh east east asian religious beliefs uh like Taoism or i don't know of, of gnostic beliefs of these dualistic beliefs that have such such an idea it is very very funny that he would come with such a thing i mean if islam wasn't was not part of the popular um culture uh in terms of tackling certain things that people are angry about right now he would probably never even uh, think of converting to islam it is all just what he thinks is uh best for his for his business and for his image and persona right now but yeah let's 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 go into this and let's see what's what these uh brilliant minds will tell us today this is 16 um, minutes oh oops uh, we're not going to watch the whole thing uh just to, to say things just in the video, as you can see, there were some people tweeting, some Muslims were a bit upset, they deemed him to say things that were borderline disbelief and all this kind of stuff were going on. So I thought as a revert of 10 years, let me share you my experience and also let's react to these videos one by one and see why certain people are taking things out of context. And one thing that we need to understand before the video starts very clear, I've been a Muslim for 10 years. And guys, when I first came to Islam, Musa would know, Musa Adnan, my friend who I lived in his house when I got kicked out, would know I used to do stuff like touch wood. Yes, I would do that in front of people. Like, bro, what are you doing? I'm like, what? And he's like, you can't do that. There'll be stuff like I would have the Turkish eye in my car. These were things that you gradually let go of. So people need to understand Andrew Tate 
is new to Islam. So when he says touch wood, he doesn't mean. Uh... <laughs> he doesn't mean David Wood, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't mean different things. What he means is that uh, that there's this whole uh, behavior of some people are aware of it. Like uh, so you, uh, so you hear something unfortunate and then you're like, oh, you know, touch wood so it doesn't happen or something like that. Some dumb stuff. Uh, that's what he was referring to. He's not referring to other thingers, thingies. Um, but yeah, so uh, he's basically just making an excuse here for... Um, how things slowly develop, although you enter with some ignorance. By the way, a quick thing to point out, Adidawa, when he refers to himself as a revert, what he actually means is that he uh, was a non-Muslim only in terms of um, his family are Alevi Muslims who are still Muslims, but they are not really not really theologically in line with Islam and uh, and and therefore he was also he also had this had this uh, non-religious upbringing and then later he connected with his uh, Muslim fellows and then you know became a became a Sunni Muslim so when he says revert he's really trying to get into that boat of Western people converting to Islam that's not the case here yeah um, he spent more time inside a prison uh, than outside as a Muslim he Guess is why? on house arrest there are many, many examples of excuses we can make. Even certain companions who came to Islam, when they were going to war, they had these superstitious beliefs of tying their swords on a tree for some kind of blessing. And they even went to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and asked them, the messenger of God who came with Tawheed, the oneness of God, and asked him, can you make us such a tree? So let's get straight into the video and understand what did he mean by that? And let's give some clarifications and give the benefit of the doubt to our brother who is new to Islam. Regardless of whether you're an atheist or not, you're thinking of God as a man in the sky, but you need to think of God. Well, the of the Andrew Tate video is not my fault. He included the video with some very weird quality, like it was recorded by a fridge or something. I don't know why this guy's got this. I mean, you could, I mean, you could point your phone at a TV screen and get a better. I don't know, man. I have no idea. This is Ali Dai. He's got a million. He's got a million. I don't know. Man. He doesn't know. I don't, I don't know. know how he did this. As a concept as a whole. And once you do that, it's impossible to accept that he doesn't exist, right? You and your friend are shipwrecked. On one island, your friend goes and he crashes and they, they kill him and they eat. And you go to another island and they want to kill you and eat you, but they don't because it's against their religion. Mm -hmm. Did God save your life? <laughs> who cares? Who doesn't even know the name of their God? But their God said, don't kill shipwrecked survivors. And now you're alive. So their God saved your life. The concept of God in and of itself saved your life. You owe God just for the concept of it, the idea of it. Okay, so let's just... I well, want to I quickly say, I want to briefly say something, David. Uh, I agree with Andrew Tate here. I'm an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, the apostate prophet has agreed that Allah exists as a concept. <laughs> I'm an atheist, and I, and I agree with Andrew Tate that if you go to an island and they don't eat you because their religion says do not eat shipwreck uh, people, uh, that the concept of their god has saved your life so it is god who saved your life as a concept i as an atheist fully agree with that dude you need to you need to make a quick video about that and point that out and then but as an atheist atheist agrees with andrew tate about <laughs> god right i was going to make a video titled something like uh atheist finally agrees with andrew tate on on god or on the existence of god or something like that but i, I thought it's too much clickbait man but maybe i should i don't know we'll see yeah and i saw i, I saw that clip circulating because mu a, a muslim was complaining about it and then you had the muslims who were defending uh andrew tate and saying ah but he doesn't know and so kind of making fun of that i put uh, I made a tweet, Andrew Tate, five years from now. I am Allah, bow down and worship me. Muslims, ah, oh, he's just new, forgive him. Um, <laughs> but so I, I don't know, I don't know if he, if he cl somehow clarified after that that he actually believes in Allah as a being. But based on what he's saying right there is, I mean, I would, he's saying I would believe in that God as a concept, right? I believe in that God as a concept too. I, I believe in unicorns as a concept. <laughs> um, so if he's saying that's how he believes in Allah, as far as the impact the concept can have on things in the world, and I choose a concept that is going to accomplish what I want in the world, and so I'm going to just believe in that, and I believe in it as a concept. If the, if he does, if he's not going beyond that, that is very interesting. 
It is very interesting, and uh, you will you will see now. Ali Dawa try to explain, try to make a comparison and explain uh, what energy means by con by con um, by 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 concept, and he gets it entirely wrong. And by by concept, he means something that is true. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so uh, let's 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 touch upon that, which is one of the biggest contentions a lot of people had. Concept. What is the definition of concept? It's an abstract idea. Now, this idea can be false or it can be real. But yes. the example that he's given, and like I said before, guys, let's just understand, and maybe just a little message to our brother, Andrew, is the following. Now, there can be false concepts that can cause you to think that you survive. For example, if I go out with my family in the forest and I go, stay away from these mushrooms, yeah? I don't know nothing about those mushrooms, but I go, if you touch that mushroom, you'll die. Or if you eat it, you'll die. Now, the mushroom itself maybe is not harmful at all. It's just a healthy mushroom. But the concept that I have brought up to my family do I then say, okay, we survived the forest because we didn't touch that mushroom or we didn't eat it? Not necessarily. It's a false concept. Therefore, some people are accusing you, and I'm here to defend you in the sense that if you are saying, like if somebody is saying that the God is just a concept, then this is problematic. Why? Because we do not believe God to be a concept. Like in the Quran, in Surah Ikhlas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ السَّمَدْ Oh, now it makes sense because he said it in Arabic. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ali Dawa. Uh, did, did you catch that part? So he's trying to explain, um, like he's trying to make a comparison to what uh, Andrew Tate means by the concept of God saving you when you go to an island and uh, the people say, their God forbids them for, for from eating the, those shipwrecked people. Uh, so in that case, the concept of God, their God, uh, has saved your life. He compares that to uh, to going and you know saying, um, "Don't eat those eat those mushrooms; they are poisonous." And then they don't eat those mushrooms. And then uh, the concept of of him saying those mushrooms are poisonous has saved their lives. But we don't even know if those if those mushrooms were actually poisonous or not. So uh, it, it's it's kind of a <laughs> It's kind of a strange comparison to make. He doesn't get the point, I think. Yeah, he's and he seems to be conflating a you, you a he's calling it a false concept, which is which is weird. It's it's a it's a concept that that uh, does not correspond to anything in reality. Yeah. Uh, I but what he's talking about is a false belief, right? I have a false belief that, or a true belief, or a false belief about mushrooms or something like that. Um. But yeah, I don't I don't know how this is helping him as far as what Andrew said. I think he should just leave the explaining to other people when it comes to things like these. Genuinely, Ali Dawa, my advice. Why don't these people? I mean, he just uh, fleetingly admits there that um, you know, if Andrew Tate means that that Allah only exists as a concept, then that is that is not what we believe is not acceptable. He fleetingly, as if it was nothing, just mentions that and then moves on. This is, I mean, they are supposed to, to supposed to stay on this and, and 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 maybe contact Andrew Tate and tell him to clarify this because this is a huge thing. I mean, the existence of Allah, of the of the very main point, the fundamental of this uh, of, of religion, of religious belief. Uh, the idea in Islam is that is that Allah creates everything, and He created you, and you are supposed to find your way and believe in Him, and then go to heaven and have sex with 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 with, with virgins and all that. Uh, but but this guy, uh, but you are okay not knowing if this guy actually believes in the existence of God or if he just thinks it's a concept. I, it's just insane to me. I don't know. I would I wouldn't just brush it off as yeah, you know, we don't know. <laughs> And and this is wild because we know all, we know these guys are in contact with Andrew Tate, yeah. Uh, because I've seen people when other people have objected to things he said in the past, someone will jump in and said, "Yeah, I, I I just went and asked him about this, and he said," and so these guys are in communication with him, and he's still saying stuff like this. And I mean, if you knew, if you knew you were doing this big interview. And you knew they they were going to talk about religion and so on. How did it? How did they not like iron out, iron out his doctrine ahead of time? I don't know. I don't understand either. It is uh, problematic. Uh, Muhammad Hijab is, is directly in touch with Andrew Tate, as he admitted himself, and he he also con contacted him before to clarify some things he said on Twitter. So it should be very easy for these people to get in touch and clarify this very big. Uh, pressing issue of on the existence of God, <laughs> and and note notice the problem here. It was one thing when he was brand new, yeah, 
he's been called out a bunch of times for saying things that are that completely contradict Islam. So if he really cares about the religion, then it seems if he knows he has this big interview, the four and a half hour interview, and he's going to be talking about Islam and Christianity, if he's sincerely interested in the religion, that seems like a time, guys, I really need to iron out my uh, my belief system here so I don't embarrass my new religion. Uh, so what do I say? Instead, he just he just plows through blurting out stuff that completely contradicts Islam and doesn't seem to care even slightly. And so, guys, this, this is the this is the this is what you're clinging to. Interesting. I mean, he also posted a photo of himself uh, only in his shorts uh, on the bed reading the Quran. Uh, supposedly, I'm not even sure if that's actually the Quran. Somebody said it's it's a hadith book, but um, yes, I, I, I tried I tried zooming in a little bit on it. I couldn't tell. Yeah, but but I don't know how they could tell that it's a it's a hadith. I mean, this is a a, a picture of uh, Andrew Tate laying there and uh, reading the Quran. Alhamdulillah, and. Of course, lots of Muslims are angry, but many of them are also like, oh, yeah, he doesn't know, but hey, dear brother Tate, please. He doesn't please, know any better. Yeah. And, and, and many, many uh, women, Muslim women and non-Muslim women or ex-Muslim women pointed out, would we get, you know, an ounce of the same tolerance mm -hmm. that you show for this guy if we as women laid there with, you know, something revealing and just, yeah, just bra, bra and panties, bra and panties. Yeah, so yeah. everything covered up. But you've got the so for for a woman it would be the Quran resting on her private parts with Andrew Tate. I mean he's got the Quran sitting right there, right right on his his balls. Yeah, <laughs> That's, yeah. Which he uses as a stand to uh, to to read the Quran. Yeah, you 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 guys who uh, you guys who have never seen Muslims read the Quran like Nabil had this little this little stand right this little uh -huh. uh, this little wooden stand that he you put the Quran on to read it. So, I mean, he's just got it sitting on his balls. <laughs> I mean, as a Muslim, you always you learn to uh, you are you you are not allowed to have the Quran below your uh, you know your your, your I don't know, your stomach, your waist, or whatever it is. Uh, you're not supposed to put it on the ground, except in a mosque where it's like out of necessity. You're supposed to always carry it up and you know wash yourself before you touch it and and all that. And this guy's just there posting a, <laughs> a, a photo of himself with his in his shorts. It's, it's and, and the fact that and what's funny is the fact that like everything, <laughs> like everything he does all day is oh, this would be good for a picture. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, was he even sitting there reading the Quran? This is the guy who made fun of people who read books, right? I know, I know. It's, it's the same guy who said reading reading books is stupid. Yeah. So, the, so guys, what what do you what do you what do you think is going on here? Is this a situation of, uh, oh, I was sitting here reading the Quran because I love sitting around reading the Quran as it rests delicately <laughs> on my balls, and oh look, look, Tristan snuck into my room and got a picture of me while I was here. Hey, you got me, Tristan. You you caught me reading the Quran, or is this? Hey, Tristan, let me throw a bone <laughs> to Muslims who are upset with me about the things I said. Uh, let's get a pic of me reading the Quran. <laughs> and I'm still a dope because I don't know, even know the basics of Islam. So they'll be happy if I just sit there with the Quran on my balls. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I thought it would be funny to, um, to, I don't know, hire somebody or if somebody actually wants to do it if for, for a woman to be in that same pose and Ooh, uh, that and, and wear and wear similar things and read the Quran and post that and e then see even, what, what people say. Even have on a even have on a, a, a full head covering. That way you're in no danger. Do not share yeah. your name. Uh, yeah. Just 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 get the pick out there to people. Um, like something like that and see how that watch them lose their freaking minds over yeah. it. Yeah. But hey, Andrew Tate <laughs> can do whatever he wants. Yeah. And yeah. what's crazy is it would not matter if a if a female convert did that on day one. I mean, on if she did that on day one, said, Hey, now I now that I've converted, I really want to uh show myself um reading the Quran here in my bra and panties. They would lose their minds, they'd be calling her whore and slut and everything else. And she's she's not a real Muslim and yeah, uh, yeah, death threats, everything. You're only doing this for attention, you whore. And yeah, this is funny the way we stopped it with Ayala pointing at his mouth, you know, at his beautiful teeth. Uh, <laughs> let's let's continue. And these were the teeth that got knocked out for the prophet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Ihi Allah is one. He is self-sufficient. He does not beget, nor is he begotten, and there is nothing like unto him. We have clear descriptions of, of who God is. So it's not a concept. We it is a concept. That is a concept. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he doesn't he doesn't understand. It is a concept, but in this case, it is a concept that is you know he he doesn't he doesn't get it. I don't know why he doesn't sit down with some with Muhammad Dijab or somebody who understands these issues better and inform himself a little bit before he sits down and makes these videos. It's quite funny. So, like, imagine the island example that you gave. If there are a couple of islands, and in those islands, one of them is, for example, they have this belief that you should not harm people or well, shipwreck uh, ship, uh, shipwrecked okay good and let's say there's another island which believes the same thing but they believe in a different god they have an idol and let's say there's another uh, uh, island where there's christians and they believe the same thing now all of them are applying the same concept of not harming a shipwrecked individual now which one of their god is the true god because when we say god save them okay but which one of them because they all believe in some kind of a god that is different one believes in an idol one believes it's jesus one believes we say no god ultimately saved you and it is the true one God, which you believe in, our brother Andrew. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I understand that's what you're trying to say. That's nothing like Andrew was saying. Thank you for completely butchering what Andrew Tate was yeah, actually that's, saying. That has Bizarre. nothing to do with what he said. <laughs> Tate, Tate, Tate is saying that, I mean, that the, a concept itself is meaningful and relevant. And uh, again, I, I don't know. I haven't finished watching that. I've started watching that interview. I haven't finished it. So I don't know if he goes on to say that he actually believes that this concept corresponds to something in reality. So guys, just to understand, like, like a, you can have a, a concept of a cup, right? But their actual cups exist, and that's kind of where we get our concept of a cup, is you see a bunch of cups, and according to Aristotle, you abstract from that, and so now you see a bunch of different cups, and even though they all look different, and they are different colors and everything else, you have some generic concept of a cup, but you can have a concept of a specific cup, um, but you could also invent a concept in, in your mind of a cup that has never existed anywhere ever. Um, you can have a concept of a horse that corresponds to something in reality. You can have a concept of a unicorn that doesn't correspond to, to something in reality. One exists in reality. The other does it. You, you have a concept. You can have a concept of both. Um, so it sounded like in what we saw from Andrew Tate, it sounded like he was saying, because he specifically said that God saved you, even though it's just a concept. And so it sounds like what he's saying is, I'm, I believe in Allah as a concept. And of course, Allah exists as a concept. Me and AP agree that Allah exists as a concept. I'm talking about the Allah of Islam. We agree. AP, the atheist, agrees that that exists as a concept. I believe Allah, Allah exists as a concept. Yeah. And so Ali Dawa is somehow trying to... I can't tell what he's doing. I, don't tell, I can't tell if he's trying to correct... Andrew Tate. Or... Maybe I, I was thinking maybe he's trying to to correct him in his own way uh, to also give Andrew Tate the message that this is actually how it really is. But it's kind of weird that he would lead from the the example that Andrew Tate uh, gave there. So yeah, because notice and Tate is right. Tate is right that a concept of something that is meaningful to lots of people. It's like you know I don't I don't believe in uh, in Allah, but. That concept has a lot of relevance in the world, has a big impact on the world. And so, yes, you someone's concept of God could prevent you from being eaten. And you could you can a, believe in that concept as a concept and say, I believe in it. I believe in that God as a concept. That's what Tate was saying. Ali, I don't know. Ali Dawa is, is he might be doing the standard Dawa tactic tactic as if I just say a bunch of words, all my followers will think that I responded to everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, clip this. I, as an ex-Muslim atheist, believe that Allah exists as a concept. The apostate prophet has agreed with Andrew Tate? I agree with Andrew Tate completely on the existence of Allah as a concept. Can you imagine that? All these Muslims trying to convince AP that Allah exists, and here Andrew Tate just rolls in and convinces AP that Allah exists as a concept? My no goodness, no Dawa does work. Tate is powerful. Tate is powerful. No doubt. Alhamdulillah. Powerful Dawa. Uh, <laughs> all right. The benefit of doubt, again, in this specific aspect. So we need to understand that when we say God as a concept, we need to understand that God is a re it's real. He is real. It's not just a concept. He is real. So we assume the best. So for those Muslims who are getting upset, 
Brothers, understand he's a new Muslim. He's been in prison. He spent Ramadan in uh, prison. With the, reading the Quran all day, according to him. Brother, it's not damn hard. So I hope that clarifies that specific uh, area. Hey, that pa pa pause that. Pause that. If, if, you're, if you're in jail, I've been in jail. <laughs> That's where I sat out and read the Bible, right? Because I was yeah. in a jail cell. I didn't have anything else to do. Uh, and so um, if you're in jail and... A, Based on what it sounds like, he was doing push-ups all day. He's doing push-ups and squats and reading the Quran. In three months, you could read through the Quran multiple times if that's yeah. all you're doing. So the, the idea that, oh, he's brand new, even though it's been, wasn't it last summer that he converted? Was it last? What, it, I don't remember. It was quite a while ago, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, yeah, I think it might have been end of summer, like August, September. I don't even, I don't even remember, but... They were cutting a guy an awful lot of slack for someone who's had, I mean, you know, done interviews with Muhammad Hijab and other guys been talking about religion this entire time. Um, and now he's finally asked about it. And yes, I believe in Allah as a concept. Oh, great. So does AP. <laughs> so so AP is as Muslim as Andrew Tate is. <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty much. May, even Probably even more, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I'm more Muslim than Andrew Tate. I yeah. Mean, do do uh, yeah, I don't see AP telling young guys to go around boning as many uh chicks as possible to get experience. So yeah, AP's yeah. actually better than Andrew T. Yeah, yeah. On to the next issue some Muslims had a problem with. I would be friends with So that's it. The problem has been solved. Well, great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Th thanks, Ali Dawa. You fix this. You fix this mess. <laughs> gay person. Yes, I'm a Muslim, but I would be friends with a gay person because if a full grown man decides to make a decision, it's his decision to make. But I must protect innocence as a man, so I must protect children. If two men if two full grown men decide to have a fight, let them fight. If a full grown man decides to pick on a kid, that's unacceptable. So I must protect innocence. Mm -hmm. So I agree with the extremism point. But I have no problem with full-grown men doing what they want to do. Maybe some Islamic scholar is going to watch this and get mad at me. I don't. Maybe, have maybe the entire religion. Uh... <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure this is um, Al-Dawa when he shows this video of Andrew Tate talking about gay people. I'm pretty sure he's not showing the whole thing. Because I'm, I'm not sure if, if my memory is fooling me. But I, um, as far as I remember... I watched a part of the section where he talks about gay people. I think he said that... Um, that it does, that, that 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 what people do in private, you know, doesn't matter or something like that, and it's it's a problem if they make it public. And uh, he also brings it about uh, about Islamic society. I'm not entirely sure. I have to check that out. But uh, that was a complete misrepresentation of of Islam and Muslims. Yeah, and I I have to go through and watch that because I mean, as far as what Andrew Tate say, and that's like that's like similar to my view. If if if. Yeah two adults are doing it i'm not the i'm not the boss of you i could say oh here's what you know this religion says or something like that if you don't care what i'm not i'm not in control of you but like tate if someone says oh i'm gonna go start talk uh, i'm gonna go start talking to the six-year-old then i'd and then i'd be like nah, I don't, what are you gonna say i, I, I really want to know what you're gonna say the same thing for what i, I mean i wouldn't want daniel hakika to or ali dawa talking to a six-year-old Right. Stay away. <laughs> you guys stay away because you got you are the guys who are, uh, um, I mean, with Hakikachu, you know, hey, have you reached precoci precocious puberty yet? And Ali Dawa, is, oh, if you soon, as soon as you get your period, tell me because I will tell you you're ready to be buried. And it's like I wouldn't want these guys either. So, yes, there there's a there's a world of difference between what adults um, what adults are doing and then adults who want to spread their ideas to little kids and you have to say okay there are some ideas that kids need to know about there are other ideas that kids do not need to know about for uh, until they get older but i mean i mean andrew tate would lots of people would agree with andrew tate on that point but the islamic position is no you got to go and kill those dudes yeah yeah and so him saying one that he'd be okay with it and he doesn't care that's their business but two he'd have no problem being friends with them they have no problem being friends with a with a gay person muslims are watching this and they're like what are you talking about these are the guys we're supposed to throw off roofs and stuff like that that's wild so um i i uh, uh not sure what exactly he said in full but um there's just one thing that I want to say, which is um, the whole idea that uh, in an Islamic society or according to Islam, 
uh, you can in your private life do whatever you want. It's only a problem if you propagate it. It's it, that is something that is often repeated by people who um, don't know much about Islam, who are soft, you know, Muslims or I don't know who, which just want to deceive people. But that's not actually truth. Um, it they make it sound like you know you, it's okay being gay in a Muslim society. You you will only get punished if you do something in public. That's complete nonsense. Doing sexual stuff in public is in any case forbidden. Uh, if if you if it is known that you are actually gay and even in a relationship and you um, you act on it in your private life. That is by itself punishable with, with death. So uh, I just want to clarify that here. Yeah, let's see. Being friends with a gay person. I mean, I'm not an Islamic scholar and I did watch this interview. Uh, once again, brothers and sisters, we need to understand what he means. And very simple. Do I, would I be friends with a gay Muslim? Depends what you mean by friend. Look, there is some individuals that I know who I actually had a discussion in the park who, who was a brother who had inclination to homosexuality. I speak to him, I've got his WhatsApp number, we speak regularly. I have, uh, we can even say, in, I have a brother in Islam, which is Brother Hussein, who I spoke to. He's my brother in Islam who has these tendencies, you know? So I don't think you can be shunned or the, the extremists, uh, uh, you know, um, that you can't be friends. So that notion doesn't exist. We hate the sin, but we do not hate the sinner unless that sinner is... It's still in lines from Christianity, okay. man. <laughs> but no, you're not supposed to say that line. You're not supposed to say that line. We hate the we hate the sin, but we don't hate the sinner. That is not a Muslim way of thinking. He should That's, be knowing this. He stole that. <laughs> he totally stole that. Uh, but I'm yeah, pretty so sure, like Daniel Kikichu or somebody else, would probably object to that line very aggressively. No. Yeah, and notice that's not what that's not what Tate was saying. So Ali Dawa here is saying, "Oh, I I would be friends with someone who is gay." in the sense that he is attracted to men, even though he does not, I mean, he has no choice over that. So someone who has no choice over what he's attracted to, but who does not act upon that, right? Who resists the attraction, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Just as, you know, you could have a guy who wants to go out and uh, sleep with every girl he sees, but doesn't, he resists it. You wouldn't You wouldn't act like that guy is, uh, is the is as horrible as someone who's actually going out and doing it that's not what tate was saying tate was talking about guys who are uh adults they have informed consent and they are deciding to be in a homosexual relationship and tate's saying i got a problem with that they're not kids and uh yeah that, so whatever ali da was talking i don't know if he again I, again I don't know if he's trying to correct andrew tate or if he's trying to clarify it to act like he wasn't contradicting islam here uh, uh to clarify that as well let's go to the next uh clip. no i oh, want to i want to watch this section again because uh this is... look there was some individuals that i know who i and i did watch this interview and uh, once again brothers and sisters we need to understand what he means and very simple do i would i be friends with a... okay so he's clearly trying to explain what andrew tate actually means this reminds me of them sitting down and clarifying what allah actually means in the quran uh now they're doing the same thing with with andrew tate when andrew tate says something they're like oh, no 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 what he actually means is this so and he is basically saying that uh, what andrew tate means here is that you would have be it's okay to be let's, let's listen to what he says i don't want to miss the game muslim depends what you mean by friend look there was some individuals that i know who i actually had a discussion in the park who who was a brother who had inclination to homosexuality. I speak to him, I've got his WhatsApp number, we speak regularly. I have, uh, we can even say, in, I have a brother in Islam, which is Brother Hussein, who I spoke to. He's my brother in Islam who has these tendencies, you know? So I don't think you can be shunned or the hey. extremists, uh, uh, you know, um, that you can't be friends. So that notion doesn't exist. We hate the sin, but we do not hate the sinner unless that sinner is propagating it. So. Uh, Notice what he just said there. Unless you're propagating it, right? Yeah, just to so, that. so he actually he actually he actually allowed it there. As far as if you're doing it in your home and you're not propagating it, then you're well. Okay. What, what he also said he also um, he also says prior to it. I mean, he explains that only if they have the tendencies. You know that that, that that's not a, that's not a problem in terms of accepting their friendship. I want to quickly listen to what Andrew Tate said again about this. And hey, see. But, but by the way, little little side note: if we were dirt bags, if we were dirt bags, you just cut this out and and title the clip. Ali Dawa admits that he is in regular contact with homosexual men. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> 
Well, I know for a fact that it's, uh, yeah, no, that's actually true in, in at least one case. So I wouldn't say that's a big surprise to me. Uh, Next issue, some Muslims had a problem with it. I would be friends with a gay person. Yes, I'm a Muslim, but I would be friends with a gay person because if a full grown man decides to make a decision, it's his decision to make. But I must protect innocence as a man, so I must protect children. If two, men, if two full grown men decide to have a fight, let them fight. If a full grown man decides to pick on a kid, that's unacceptable. So I must protect innocence. Mm -hmm. So I agree with the extremism point. But I have no problem with full-grown men doing what they want to do. Maybe some Islamic scholar is going to watch this and get mad at me. I don't have a problem being gay with gay people and being friends with them. Notice what Andrew Tate is clearly saying here is uh -huh. that uh, grown adults full -grown can men. do with each other whatever they want. Uh -huh. I don't care. I don't care. I would only have a problem with you know if if it is if it was done to kids, for example. But two grown adults, they are they are gay, and they uh, they live out their their gay sexual relationship together. I don't care. I I can be friends with them. It doesn't matter. Adawa jumps in and he's like, you know, it, what he means is, you know, it's it's it's, it's no problem if some if somebody that you know has you know gay tendencies, and uh, as long as he doesn't you know act upon it or propagate it, it's okay. You know, if if you if you stay in touch with that guy. Dude, that is completely different from what Andrew Tate just said here. Maybe you should sit down and respond to if Andrew Tate has said something problematic here, according to Islam, that it's okay to be friends with people who are actively uh, and publicly homosexual sexually with their partners. And then he's even he even he obviously even knows he's got a problem with Islam here, right? Because he points it out. Maybe some Islamic scholars would disagree. Like he already knows there's not going to be a lot of agreement with him on that point from an Islamic perspective. And so it's, uh, oh yeah, scholars might disagree. Yeah, I mean, are you, are you guys aware? Is it, Ali Dawa aware? Are others aware that, uh, that Ali Dawa is just here obviously downplaying and, and, and twisting what Andrew Tate says just to make excuses for him, just so they can keep, uh, you know, waving him as, as this uh, wonderful new Muslim convert. He is clearly and blatantly, maybe because he's not smart enough to understand, but very clearly misrepresenting what Andrew Tate actually said. Because that way of thinking, that has no place in Islam. And that, that's, you know, <laughs> wow. Anyway, let's move on. Well, that notion doesn't exist. We hate the sin, but we do not hate the sinner unless that sinner is propagating it. So, yes, just to clarify that as well. Let's go to the... So, uh, Adawa just converted to Christianity. Next uh, clip. Truly, and I want to make one more point. I do believe there is one God, and I believe there's many different paths to God. <sighs> Wait, let's, let's see if you can do... Wait, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, you got to go back because I was laughing because uh, uh, Anna on Twitter just uh, sent us a picture... <laughs> That, that was an answer to the earlier challenge, right? Like, can some, what if a female posted a, what if a woman posted a picture? Like that? <laughs> she, she tagged, she tagged you on, she tagged you on Twitter, but she, I, she, I see it she, now. She I see it now. Yeah. I I'm sorry. See I was it so we, yeah, we have to repeat this because I didn't see what he said because I was laughing about that. <laughs> I see it now. I, I can't put this on the screen, unfortunately. No, no, and notice there's nothing that's actually, there's nothing actually showing, but yeah. it is, it is so, uh, <laughs> it's it's so provocative that even though you're not actually showing anything it's very parallel to what andrew tate uh posted himself doing but it's like we, we can't even post this and we're trying to make fun of it we're not even going to show this you, you should post this with the with the caption uh reading the quran just like andrew tate <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Anna, you're gonna have to send that to someone else because, <laughs> as a as a Christian, I cannot even say, even though even though it's not actually showing anything. I might uh, I might post it. I might post it. I just have to figure out uh, if uh, I don't know. This, this image is taken from some, uh, I guess, from some stock footage site, uh, and what it is and what the rights to that are. But I, I will, I might post it later. I don't know. It's funny. Oh boy. Uh... <laughs> This is good. This is good. She, she's got shoes on, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. Clip. Truly, and I want to make one more point. I do believe there is one God, and I believe there's many different paths to God. Okay, good. So he says that he believes in one. David, what he just said is a very popular phrase. 
right? And you are aware of this. What does that phrase mean? Can you briefly tell us what that phrase means? <laughs> yeah, m many paths to God means, you know, whatever, whatever you believe is fine, as long as you're a good person and you follow that. And uh, I'm sure people have heard the example of that, that circulated for a long time with the elephant. If you have, I forget what it is, you have five blind people and they all walk up to an elephant yeah, and they're feel they're trying to feel what the elephant is, and like one of them grabs onto the leg, and he says, "Ah, this is a tree," and the other guy grabs on a tail, and he goes, "No, this is a snake," and they all grab on a different part of the elephant, and they think it's something different, and yet it's all the same elephant. That's how God is. We all have, you know, our different because of our limited perception and so on. We all have uh, a limited view of what God is, and so we're all kind of latching on to a different part. But we're all we're all right. We're all right about. Uh, that being God, and that's what he's. That's what Tate is saying. Like, yeah, many many paths. But notice, so so Islam, yes, that's one path. But I really like the concept of God as far as what I want to do in the world. But of course, there are you know tons of other paths to God. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, uh, another example that people might have heard of is is um, is that how a hand has uh, many different fingers. Um, you know, in, in the same way, uh, there are many different ways of god with which you know he can with, with which he reaches you and with which you can reach him so long story short this is a very uh well-known common position in terms of uh religious beliefs when you say that there are many paths uh to god or many paths of god uh, you are basically acknowledging that there is not only one uh truth and one way to uh to the truth to salvation to god there are many of them so it is it is a non-exclusivist it is an inclusivist position in terms of religion and that is directly and very clearly in contradiction with the quran with islam with fundamental islamic beliefs so if you if you express such a position uh in a muslim society you will be um you will normally be called a kafir, a disbeliever, because you have just openly, um, you know, disagreed with the Quran and with a fundamental Islamic position. And you would normally be this is called perennialism, and you would normally be be told to to repent and to review what you have just said. Uh, if you don't, if you have accidentally said it, you would be told to immediately correct yourself. And then to say the Shahada again so that you can be considered a Muslim, because this is an act of disbelief. It is blasphemy. That is what is normally what is actually happening here. Yeah. And I'd like to. So uh, uh, what Andrew Tate, if Andrew Tate is right here, then you could be a Muslim and say, uh, you know, actually, I want to be a Christian. I like that other path to God. <laughs> and yeah. you're totally you're totally good because it's a different path. It's a different path to God. And therefore, there shouldn't be any killing of apostates. Andrew Tate has said there are other paths to God. Yeah, yeah. And the Quran explicitly says uh, that um, that there is only one religion, only one religion is accepted of you. Allah will only accept one religion. 385. 385. I think it's 385. 385. Let's see. 385. Um, let's get to that. Oh, yeah, here. This is in the Quran, and whoever desires other than Islam as a religion, never will be, will it be accepted from him, and he in the hereafter will be among the losers. And there are other verses which um, hint at this, which have similar things. Other verses which say that the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam, uh, and so on. So this is a very clear uh, disagreement with a fundamental Islamic belief here, and in an Islamic traditional Islamic society, it would it would any person this would push outside the vaults of Islam, and the person would be told to repent. It doesn't matter if you are a scholar, an apologist, or whatever it is. This is a a phrase of kufr of disbelief, so, and, and and this guy just brushes it off, and you will see now. Yeah, and so but but you know he he's only been a Muslim for almost a year, right? So, <laughs> so he doesn't know the basics, right? So. It is interesting that he's just getting a free pass on all this. Stuff. And they have to, right? Do you realize, like, the awkward position that they're in, that they propped him up as, like, the the uh, their Dawa trophy. You see, Dawa, Dawa really works. It's really effective. Look how we're reaching these guys. But then when they blurt out something like this, they have to treat him with kid gloves because 
if the if the big guys, if the guys who celebrated him at first come out swinging, dude, you're not even a Muslim with this stuff you're saying. They know he's he doesn't have the sort of personality type that's going to put up with it, right? He's not going to be. Oh, thank you for correcting me. It's not him. It's what you. I mean, when 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 you believe you're the greatest man in in the world, you do not respond kindly to other people telling you correcting you. Um, and so they have to treat him with delicate kid gloves because they don't want to come out. Andrew, you're saying, look, man, you need to shut up. Just shut up. You can't do that because he'll be like, well, fine, I'll, t I'll pick a different religion then since there are all these different paths to God. And uh, I'll pick a different concept that I believe in since they're all concepts. And so they're all kind of real in that sense. Um, and they can't do it. So the, this, is a, this is a weird position to be in. All they had to do was not prop him up. I mean, uh, the, the Islam that Andrew Tate presents here in that uh, little section of that speech and that, with that little phrase, if that was the real Islam, I wouldn't have a, I wouldn't have a huge problem with Islam. I wouldn't go out here. Uh, you know, no one would, because they wouldn't be slaughtering him. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, then, then it's okay to become an apostate, right? Because because uh, because there are many paths and all that. So, you know, what's the issue um, here? Can, can you? I mean, but it's Andrew funny. said, God is one and there are many paths to God. Sahih Bugatti. <laughs> <laughs> Sahih Bugatti. I'm gonna, <laughs> hey, Fad, you heard it here. I'm going to steal Sahih Bugatti. Um, and, and I'm not giving any credit. I never do. I just steal stuff. Um, but what's funny is, I mean, think about how he's even contradicting Ali Dawa, not just Islam. I mean, Ali Dawa, that's the guy who, uh, when we get in the Islamic State, we're going to chop your head off AP, right? He's the guy who's telling you that when... Uh, according to Andrew Tate, you're all good. How do we know? Atheism might be another path to God, since there are so many paths to God. As long as yeah. you're being a good, as long as you're being a good person, and believe in being a good person, and you're an atheist, why not, Andrew? Andrew Tate. You know what's also funny? Um, when Jordan Peterson talked, uh, made a message to Muslims, and he basically talked about how, you know, uh, we all believe in God and, you know, and uh, we should appreciate each other's, like, he, he was trying to present this whole acceptance of each other's religious beliefs issue. Daniel Hikikichu came out with a very harsh video where he said, I apologize for ever saying that Muslims can learn from this guy. This guy uh, is a charlatan. Every Muslim mm. should immediately turn away from him. He's trying to promote uh, this idea of different uh, different paths to God. Now Andrew Tate does it and nobody cares. <laughs> now Andrew Tate does it and Daniel Kikichu is, is completely okay with it, it, it seems. It's so funny. It is. They, oh my goodness, they're, they are oh, in this. So, so you have the... If a woman were doing this stuff, she would be in massive trouble. If anyone who weren't a Dawa trophy were saying this stuff, they would be in massive trouble. But because he has the special status of super famous Dawa trophy, this guy could do anything he wants. He, he's in the position of being able to contradict Islam. He could, he could sit there and talk for five hours, contradict every fundamental belief of Islam, but still say at the end of it, and I'm a Muslim because, you know, uh, because it's so powerful or something like that. And I really like the concept. And they'd, they'd still be going, oh, you see, alhamdulillah, our hero. Wild, man. Wild, wild stuff. 2023, Dawa. It's a wild, wild world. Um, I did, I haven't really read this tweet, but I just found it because I'm looking for something. Uh, Jihad Noir said, um, Andrew Tate supported Shirk, his fans ate it up. Kufr, his fans ate it up. Pimping, rape, porn, grifting, greed, materialism, selfishness, his fans ate it up. Tate says he doesn't have anything against gays. Uh, tires screech. Okay, he's seriously <laughs> confused. I love him, but <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's funny. That's funny. That is funny. That is funny. All right, uh, let's go on here. Which again affirms what he said, guys, that he believes in the oneness of God. But there are many paths to God. The oneness and of the concept of God. That mean? Well, look, look at look at this. Look, guys, that he believes in the oneness of God. But there are many paths to God. Um, we don't know what exactly that means, but <laughs> you don't know exactly what that means, Aladawa. You don't know what exactly this means. Apparently, I don't. I don't know if you really don't know what that means, but it's you who doesn't know what that means yeah <laughs> i mean since i don't know what it means maybe he means there's only one path to islam and to god and that is islam maybe that's what he means okay next point wow man wow we believe in the oneness of god so, okay good so he says that he believes in one god which again affirms what he said is that he believes in the oneness of god but there are wow really he said he believes in one god which affirms that he only believes in wow that's amazing that's a very good insight wow there are many paths to god 
Um, we don't know what exactly that means, but we believe that there is only one path to God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that he's chosen Islam for us. And it is only yes. Islam that he would accept from us. Exactly. Um, different people have different journeys. And we need to understand something very simple and clear, brothers and sisters. Sometimes certain things... No, Ali Dawa, you are... Uh, because you want to give this guy all kinds of uh, benefits, you are completely ignoring what is actually being said. You would you would probably never do the same thing if some if if some reformist Muslim or modernist Muslim said those same things. What Andrew Tate is clearly saying here, Ali Dawa and other Muslims, is I believe that there is one God, but I also believe that there are many paths to God. You can believe in this, you can believe in that, you can you can go with this belief and with that belief and this tradition and that religion. In the end, all leads to God. That's what he's saying, which you completely reject right now, Ali Dawa. I don't know if you are too if you're not bright enough to understand that, or if you deliberately want to uh, pretend you are not understanding it, but that is exactly what he's saying. Uh, when, when you're talking about all the all the uh, all the benefits they'll benefits of the doubt they'll they'll give him um i thought of a name for people like tate who are the dawa trophies we'll call them muslims with benefits <laughs> <laughs> muslims with benefits you you get to slide on all this other stuff you get to oh, slide boy. on on anything you can even call yourself god we've seen him do that multiple times declared that he's god yeah. Uh, and nope he's just a new muslim brothers and sisters he doesn't know anybody he doesn't know he shouldn't be calling himself god it's wild, man. Wild, wild stuff. Things, look, it might be that Andrew Tate came to Islam for the wrong reasons. This is the highlight, actually. This is the most important part. Oh, cool. This is awesome. This, in my opinion. Look, it might be that Andrew Tate came to Islam for the wrong reasons. But guess what? He may be staying in Islam for the right reasons. How <laughs> what? what? What has he said? What has Andrew Tate said that is a correct reason? at all but i mean my goodness what dolly ali dawa is saying yeah you come for completely wrong reasons but then you stay so you uh you convert for the dawa lies but you 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 enter for the dawa lies but you stay for the uh secret second wives and the child brides and for the free passes we give you on everything if you're famous well, of course yeah lots of lots of guys like andrew tate would love to sign up if if that's if that's the deal now um those who are familiar with with these dawa people and their history are probably aware of the fact that people like Ali Dawa, specifically him and others have a long history of bashing ex-muslims people who left islam and making uh videos I don't know, exposing them and showing how uh they were never muslims and this and that and it, it's just um and, and they laugh at them for leaving Islam for the wrong reasons. And they pick out these, these, these small things like, oh, look, this person got this wrong. Oh, look, she got that wrong. So she left Islam and she didn't even know this. But when it comes to joining Islam, you can join Islam for the completely wrong reasons, for all kinds of nonsense. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you joined Islam and then the rest will come. Yeah. Isn't this a little bit hypocritical? Isn't there it, it, a little it, bit of a double standard here? It falls into the same category of, uh, like, if you leave Islam, they have this checklist of tests to determine if you are a real Muslim. When if you leave some other religion, like if you were if you're raised as a Christian, you can you can know absolutely nothing about Christianity, clearly have never read one verse of the Bible in your entire life. And they'll parade you. You see, ex-Christian. Uh, by the way, why is he giving why is he giving the Islamic hand signals for two gods here? <laughs> what is this? It's supposed to be this, and now he's like this. Look at what Tate has done to him. Now they're now they're now they're two paths. He's not up to many paths, but he's up to two paths. That's funny. That's funny. I'm looking at, at at videos right now, and there's like from from years ago, reacting to ex-Muslim stories, one million views, where they sit down and together, Ali Dawa and some other guy, and basically laugh at an ex-Muslim, alleging that she gets things wrong. So they have a long history of this. But then when it's when it is Andrew Tate, it's like, well, you know, it's you know, it's new. I, you know, he might join for nonsense reasons, but you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and it, it's true. I mean, wow. his reason, if you, again, if you go back to what he was saying when he was praising Islam before he converted, it was like, like picking a stock. That's what it yeah. was. That's why he picked Islam. And it clearly aligned with his views on a lot of things. And at some point they started praising him so much just because he was uh, celebrating 
uh, the idea of killing people for insulting your prophet that he had so much praise, he, real, he realized, hey, if I convert to this, I've got an army of people who are going to support me no matter what. But notice, it's the same thing with Sneeko, right? Sneeko's reasons for converting were all, I, I'm not saying I disagree with him or I'm not entirely convinced. I'm saying every single thing he said was completely false. He said, I don't want a religion where I have to submit to a man. Islam demands that you submit to Muhammad. It's a requirement of the religion. Uh, the other things were just like his personal preferences. I don't like pictures and things like that. <laughs> and so it's like the dumbest things you've ever heard in your entire life for why people would um, convert. The, like the Muslims, the reverse would just be like uh, a Muslim saying, I left Islam. And you say, why? Why'd you leave Islam? And he goes, I don't know. I always wanted to try, I always wanted to try bacon. So I, I left Islam so I could try bacon. And they would say, that is the stupidest nonsense I've ever heard in my life. Great. That's what your recent popular converts sound like to everyone else. They sound like they're giving completely stupid um, explanations for why they are converting to Islam. And what's what's the response? Ah, as long as, you know, uh, uh, yeah, you come to the religion for stupid reasons, but then you stay because it's so great. You get your yeah. child brides, your child brides, and your secret second wives, and so on. Hold on a second. And you're too past. You're too past to go. <laughs> I, I just saw a comment that I wanted to check if it's if it's uh, if it's real. Uh, but yeah, I will check later. Uh, very funny stuff. Very funny information. But yeah, no, um, no, yeah, absolutely. If you as as long as you want to join Islam, you can jo join for complete nonsense reasons. And now, now, pay attention to this. Pay attention. Pay attention to what comes next. Well, guess what? He may be staying in Islam for the right reasons. How? I One of the reasons I accepted Islam was the scientific miracles. I'll be honest with you. And now we know that this whole scientific miracles was absolute nonsense. Not to in total, but guess what? <laughs> you I'm just said absolute Islam. nonsense. <laughs> he uses words that without knowing their meaning, but yeah, uh, but maybe he, yeah, yeah. Absolute nonsense, but not in total, realizing, realizing the backlash he's going to get for saying absolute nonsense. And then so he tries to qualify it. <laughs> Ali Dawa just said that the that, uh, scientific miracles in the Quran narrative is nonsense. Let's see. One of the reasons. Ab absolute is nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. In total. But guess what? Allah led me to Islam. One of the reasons was because of the scientific miracles. And guess what? Did I leave Islam when this whole scientific miracle thing got debunked? No. I stayed because I grew in faith. Because I'm stupid. <laughs> and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran to the Bedouins. Don't say you have believed. But rather say you have submitted. They were Bedouin Arabs. And Allah says, because Iman hasn't entered your heart. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? It says the Bedouins say we have believed. Say you have not yet believed. But rather say we have submitted. For, for faith has not entered your heart. If you obey Allah and his messenger, he will not deprive you from your deeds or anything. This is not so, powerful. Say it in faith Arabic. Faith hasn't come into your heart yet. <laughs> say so it in Arabic so it's magic. Every mu'min is a Muslim, but not every Muslim is a mu'min. A true, true, true believer in that sense. This. So, wow, wow. He said he calls it debunked. So he says that uh, absolute nonsense. And he says debunked. scientific miracles in the Quran narrative is absolute nonsense. He says we know it's nonsense. He says it has been debunked. We said the same thing. We say the same thing nowadays. We have said it quite a bit. And when we say it, uh, Muslims come out and they're like, liar, liar. What about this miracle? What about that miracle? And here is Ali Dawa with his now newly reached 1 million subscribers. The, the guy who does the Dawa, he comes out saying, scientific miracles, yeah, that's nonsense. It's nonsense. Think about this. It has, I mean, it has been debunked. Debunked. All of the arguments that were spread by their da'is in the in the 90s and early 2000s. So all the arguments of Ahmed Didat and Zakir Naik and all these guys, I mean, what are the arguments of, of Dawa in the 1990s and the 2000s? It's uh, perfect, miraculous preservation of the only Quran, only one Quran, no variants anywhere. It's a miracle. Mathematical marvels in the Quran, um, especially the number 19. Uh, you've got the scientific miracles and you've got muslims now admitting that all of these were com were completely bogus but guess what people people were converting people were converting to islam based on the claim that they have all these arguments and now they're admitting 
that all of these arguments were completely bogus, what are they still using? What are what arguments are they still using? They're still clinging to, yeah, Zucker Nike. Here's a book by Zucker Nike, which is focused on uh, scientific miracles. It is focused on scientific miracles. It says uh, the Quran and modern science is compatible or, or incompatible by Dr. Zucker Nike, and it just talks endlessly about uh, the scientific miracles in the Quran. This is and it. If you read that, and by the way, that was the first argument that I was ever given for Islam. This was in prison, and the imam of the Muslim community said, I can show you some stuff. And he showed me a video that went through these scientific miracles. And all I kept doing over and over and over again with every single example, he was telling me, he said, when the first time I saw this, it blew my mind. He was a convert. Uh, saying the first time I saw this, it blew my mind, and it'll blow yours. And, and so we just sit there watching it. And every single example it was, they would quote a Quran verse, and then they would speak for 10 minutes about science and stuff like that. And then they would say, and how could Muhammad have known this? And I would just be sitting there thinking, he didn't say any of that. He didn't say any of that in that verse. There's nothing, there's nothing that you're, that you're saying about science that is actually in the verse. That's when, I, I mean, that was the first argument I was ever given for Islam. And all I was thinking was, you guys are just saying a bunch of words and acting like that is the, the defense of the issue. And it's not. It's, there's nothing you said there that was in that verse. And um, and so it, it was but it was persuasive to lots of people, because once they see all the graphics on the screen, they're like, yeah, how could Muhammad have known about the Big Bang and all this other stuff? How could he have known about that? It's a it's a miracle. And, uh, and now you've got their Dawah guys after decades of us pointing out the problems. They're admitting it's been debunked. So what do you say? It's like it's like he's aware that this is not just about Andrew Tate. This is about all those people who believed because of the so supposed miraculous preservation of the Quran, because of the miraculous scientific insights and so on. They realize all of this is collapsing and he's trying to uh, put a Band-Aid on the messies that they've created and saying, oh, yeah, yeah. Even though you converted for a bunch of completely bogus reasons, you should still cling to Islam. But here's what's amazing, AP. So, uh, so uh, Ali Dawa understands that the the very reasons that caused that convinced him to convert are bogus. But he's saying, ah, he found this other stuff. He found something else once he's here. But we we did a live stream what a month or two ago where we went through like his latest re his latest arguments for Islam, and they were just as they were every bit as dumb as the scientific arguments or the perfect preservation argument he was still clinging i mean like his best example was muhammad said the romans are going to win a battle and it's like that's that's his that's his most powerful one and there are like 27 different problems we can point out with that argument yeah. um and so it's like oh yeah all the other it's like it's like this uh it's like waves of bad arguments, right? Like, uh, here's some, here's some really, we're going to make up a bunch of stuff and claim that this is evidence for Islam, knowing that it will take people 10 to 20 years to correct the lies that we've spread. But by that time, we're going to knock you over with another wave of lies. And by the time you expose those lies, we're going to come, we're going to crash uh, another wave of lies on you. And this, it's like, wait, 14 centuries. And all you do is like crash wave after wave of lies. And this is, I mean, this is how Dawa works. This is, I mean, this is him saying this is how Dawa works. This is a, I don't know. This is wild. It's, it's funny. We say these things all the time and they, and they say to us, oh, you, all your arguments have already been debunked. You're just spreading lies and this and that. And then years later, he's here says, well, you know, that, that has already been, uh, that is already, that is wrong. We know now that it's nonsense. Well, great, great. Maybe you should have acknowledged that it's nonsense when we were talking about it. And we were responding to it. Maybe you should have acknowledged it as nonsense where your preachers were preaching that stuff to the public and thereby trying to convert people to Islam. Maybe you should have acknowledged that it was nonsense back then. Maybe you should sit down now and say, hey, guys, there are still a lot of people who go around and say uh, that there are scientific miracles in the Quran. But no, that's that's nonsense. Of course, they will not do this. Of course, you will not do this because to you, Ali Dawa, and to all the others, it is completely convenient that people uh, with lies or through nonsense, as Ali Dawa calls it, convert to Islam. It doesn't matter why they convert to Islam. That is his entire point here. It doesn't matter why they convert to Islam. They can convert to Islam for nonsense reasons, for lies, for whatever it is. You can lure people into Islam. You can, you can, you know, get them into the folds of Islam. None of it matters. But what matters is that they become Muslims, even if they convert for, I don't know, because, because they think Islam um, 
Islam cares a lot about, I don't know, plush toys and whatever, whatever it is. So that's why they convert to Islam. And later they find out that that's complete nonsense. It doesn't matter. They convert to Islam for some dumb reason, but now they are within Islam. Now they can learn. This is Dawah. <laughs> and I mean, think about that because what you just, what you just pointed out, that, that, that follows pretty obviously from what he's saying that, wait a minute, Ali Dawa, if you're right, that it is still good to convert to Islam for completely bogus reasons, then as a da'i, is it acceptable for you to knowingly give completely false and bogus arguments to yes. ignorant people and use the same arguments that have been completely debunked Yes. And to use those to get people to convert so that they, you know, they get the true religion just for completely false reasons. You're saying that's fine. That's even how you came to Islam. You were given completely bogus information to get you to convert and you say you're glad it happened. So according to you, is it perfectly acceptable to knowingly lie and deceive to lie to and deceive people like Sneeko? To, because keep in mind, when Sneeko said, I mean, he said, he actually said, because there's only one Quran, no version, none, none that, that, that was a lie. Someone lied to him. Yeah. So is, is that fine as long as you get him to convert? I mean, if and if so, if it is, then can you just say anything? Can you just make up absolutely anything that any person is interested in and say, yes, Islam is the religion for you as long as you get? Because you've seen these videos in the past where a Muslim preacher will be saying, um, you know, I was talking, I was doing, I was giving dawah to a guy who said that he can't convert to Islam because he can't give up drinking. I said, no problem, no problem. You can drink in Islam, just convert. And as soon as he converted, we said, now stop drinking or we'll lash you. And, go, and, all, and, the, and the crowd's like cheering and, and cracking up laughing. They thought this was hilarious, right? They thought this was hilarious that you're doing. It's like, wait a minute, you, you flat out lied to the guy to get him to convert. Yeah. And then, and then as soon as he converted, now you tell him the truth. Uh, it just seems like, I don't know, lying is perfectly acceptable. This is an example I heard, I heard when I was when I was a Muslim, and the person telling me that was like uh, smiling and laughing as a result of that that comparison, and it's it's funny. It's only afterwards, now that I'm out of it, uh, I realize how messed up that actually is. So, yeah. So, is is it then okay to lie to people just to make them convert to Islam? Ali Dawa, that is the 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 camel in the room. Yeah. For for faith has not entered your hearts. If you obey Allah and his messenger, he will not deprive you from your deeds of anything. So, which is very clear, meaning faith hasn't come into your heart yet. So every Muslim is, every mu'min is a Muslim, but not every Muslim is a mu'min. A true, true, true believer in that sense. This comes with time, which is one of the reasons I'm doing this video. Because we know very clearly our brother Andrew Tate is a Muslim. Is he a mu'min yet? No, not just yet. He'll be working towards that. So this mu'min means belief or somebody who has put actual faith, belief into it. That's fine. clearly shows us the following. But Allah also mentions in the in, in Surah Ahzab in the Quran, Inna al Muslimina wal Muslimati wal Mu'minina wal Mu'minati wal Qanitina wal Qanitati, and the oh, goes okay. on. Oh, okay. yeah. And that they will have a great reward. So we need to understand we give him the benefit of doubt. He's still learning. And I highly, highly encourage him. And if Prophet Tam Khan is watching this, which I'm sure he will be, I was actually going to do this video because I heard some things about himself. Alhamdulillah, clarified with Ustad Abu Taymiyyah, which I, I was speaking to him today. And he said, you are actually... Yeah, okay, whatever. So uh, the rest of it is just, I think... <laughs> I'm sorry. Anna, uh, she sent another picture, one I actually can use, but... Uh... It's it's from Shutterstock, which I actually have a subscription to, so I can use it. But I realized I could Photoshop this. In other words, it's easy to remove background. I can actually put her in the room with Andrew Tate carrying a stack of books. Uh, <laughs> to, to... So, guys, that 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 will be up tonight, ladies and gentlemen. It's a more acceptable picture because she's got books covering up uh, her privates, just like Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> That is that is nice, oh. but yeah. So so the results of this. I mean, first off, I, I I want to just highlight and listen to that section one more time. First off, he openly says and admits that the whole um, you know Quran miracles narrative is nonsense, which is by the way by the way a a fantastic thing to hear because from now on, whenever a Muslim comes to me and, and tries to say, well, you know, what about the, the miracles in the Quran? I will just say, why, do you not know that even your 
Muslim apologists say it's nonsense. Look at this and, and, and just show this part to them. So <laughs> that's very good. Uh, he, not only does he openly say that the Quran uh, scientific miracles narrative is complete nonsense, he also says that as long as somebody says, I am now a Muslim, I have converted to Islam, it doesn't really matter why they convert to Islam. Because all they need to do is submit. They must submit. It doesn't matter if they yet have faith, if they believe for the right reasons, if they believe uh, that they have to you know, uh, worship Allah and pray five times a day and then go to heaven, or if they believe that Islam is all about you know, dancing and having fun. It doesn't matter. What matters is that they... Uh, you know, profess uh, as Muslims and then the rest will just come. And that is just incredibly idiotic, incredibly idiotic. Isn't it, uh, doesn't it seem like the breakdown of Dawah has accelerated? Yeah. I mean, it used to take us like 15, 20 years to correct one of their lies now their lies are dropping like flies. I mean, they just they just started acknowledging that the perfect preservation argument, the mathematical marvels arguments were bogus. And now the scientific miracles, that's bogus. Wait, was, like, was, was that a revelation from Allah? It just rhymed so well. Wait. Yeah, it must be. It, it, I, challenge every, I challenge the entire world to, uh, <laughs> to show me something better than what I just said. And I'm, I'll be the judge of the contest. And if... <laughs> If uh, if you can't if you can't meet my challenge, which I will judge, then you have to admit that I'm a true prophet and everything I say is is correct. <laughs> but notice, I mean, what's what's left? I mean, it's what Muhammad and the Bible. <laughs> here's here's what's hilarious, right? You can go to any of the arguments for Muhammad and the Bible; they sound absolutely insane to anyone who's actually read any of those passages, because Old Testament or New Testament, Muhammad Muhammad meets the requirements of a false prophet according to both. So arguing that he is a true prophet according to the text, which give criteria, which he meets as a, and would qualify him as a false prophet. Um, you'd say this is a, this is a ridiculous argument, but they still defend it. But notice who's defending this as a great argument that, that Muhammad's in the Bible, the same exact people who told you there are all these scientific miracles, the same exact people who said there are all these mathematical miracles, the same exact people who said there's only one Quran perfectly preserved down to the letter from the time of Muhammad, the same exact people who they now admit were lying to you are the same people who've defended Muhammad in the Bible, but you're supposed to trust them, right? You're, you're, you're talking to a guy right here who believes that it's it's completely legitimate to enter Islam based on complete lies. He thinks that's fine. But if he says, hey, Muhammad, oh, I found Muhammad in the Bible. He's right here. You're going to believe him, right? That That's, I mean, <laughs> like, am I crazy here? It's like they're establishing themselves as the biggest deceivers and least trustworthy people on the planet. But after they're acknowledging that, it's they say, oh, trust us when we give you an argument. I mean, um, maybe he, sh he should be sitting here and, and thinking, uh, oh, wait, so you converted to Islam because of this? Well, I have to inform you that was actually not true. So, you know, the reason you converted to Islam is not, is not, is not, is not, a, is not a good reason. So, you know, think that through. But maybe, but there are other reasons. Maybe, you know, maybe you should look into those. But no, 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 no. It doesn't matter. Just give him time. Just ignore it. Just give him time. Advise him. And he will slowly learn and adapt because, you know, it doesn't really matter why they converted to Islam. So. And what's 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 crazy is the the arguments go all the way back. Like the, the stupidity of the the arguments keep changing, but the stupidity of the arguments goes all the way back. I mean, if you read the Hadith, I mean, they, they actually thought that a big mole on Muhammad's back was proof that he's a prophet. I mean, that's the level of stupidity. Well, it is right? proof. What are you talking about? Yeah. So it's like, oh, look at this giant mole. You ever seen a mole like this? Oh, my goodness. I've never seen a mole like that. You see, I must be a prophet because only a prophet would have a giant mole like this. Oh, really? Alhamdulillah. Let me convert. Amazing. Um, and 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 it's again it's this like crashing waves of deception all the way down to our time and what are they what are they doing right now they're going to be putting together more arguments but again it seems to be the the pace at which we refute their arguments and then they acknowledge that they've been refuted seems to be accelerating so it's like what are you guys going to say next that isn't immediately going to be ob obliterated yeah nothing you can say nothing anymore that is that is going to pass 
they just they they do the, they do our job for us nowadays. It's has become really really strange. yeah with, yeah with friends like this. My goodness. The Christian metalhead said, "Nader Ahmed is going to be really upset when he finds out about this." <laughs> he probably knows because he's, he watches all of our live streams and videos and everything. He has nothing else to do but just sit there and uh, just follow us. And as soon as we mention him, he will probably immediately become aware of this and will say, "I challenge you to a debate." So, <laughs> I challenge you to a debate on the scientific miracles of the Quran. <laughs> Oh, no. Hey, no. I challenge Ali Dawa to debate me on the scientific <laughs> miracles of the crowd. Good. You guys, you guys deal with that. Uh, Jesse Brand said, why do they start reciting things in Arabic when they are confronted, scared about things? It's like a survival mechanism, LMAO. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. With, with people like, I don't know about Ali Dawa, with hijab, he really seems to think that it has like magical powers and that if he recites the Quran in Arabic, it's going to it's going to persuade people. But yeah, with other people, I, with other, I think for someone like Ali Dawa, it might be, hey, as long as I start saying it in Arabic, this is really impressive to my followers, even though no one else cares. But my followers are really impressed as soon as I uh, recite something in Arabic. But yeah, it is. I, Ali Dawa like, can't even recite properly. That's just it's just it's funny. But uh <laughs> Wait, 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 wait a minute. I just, I'm just seeing somebody else react to the whole Andrew Tate thing. Uh, do you want to have a brief look at that very quickly? It's your show, sir. Um, where is that? What is this? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, brothers and sisters. Hope you're all doing well. Andrew Tate. Is this shake your booty? <laughs> That's what I was just thinking. He has the same <laughs> intro as you. He stole your intro, man. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I, to be fair, Shaky Booty stole his intro from uh, from Sajid Lippin, so uh, I have to I have to say that on behalf of Shaky Booty, uh, isn't this? I think this is uh, this is the son or something else of that other guy. What's his name? Who I don't know who this is. That one Dawa what, guy who looks like. What's him. the What's the channel name? Musa Adnan. Isn't there some this other Muslim apologist? Uh, something Adnan. There's Adnan Rashid. And then there's some there's another Adnan that I forget who was it Ali Dawa who mentioned someone mentioned someone recently of Adnan. I think it was Ali I Dawa. Know. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, let's see. Respected the Quran. Has he done something which deserves him being dragged for on social media? Is he, he talking about the picture? Brothers and sisters, firstly, what has Andrew Tate done now? Yeah, yeah. What he has done is he posted a picture. There's a picture for what has he done now? <laughs> going around on Twitter. And he is lying down like this, okay? Oh, there we go, yeah. <laughs> he's in shorts, and he's got, allegedly, the translation of the Qur'an on his... Why are you describing it instead of... Just... On his... Wait, on his... What was he going to say? And he's reading it like On this, his lap. Okay? He said oh. lap. And some people are saying on social on media... On his balls. In the Qur'an, <laughs> they're dragging him on social media for it, etc. Has he actually disrespected the Qur'an? Okay, first, let's deal with this issue. There's two things that we need to deal with. Number one, the aura issue, Okay. Is he showing his aura? Yeah. Uh, we're not going to go into that. Uh, is he showing his, his aura, which That's is... That's that era, like the, the belly down to the... Down yeah, to the, uh, anything... Down to the thighs or something like that. Yeah, anything that is private for women, it is the whole body. And for men, it is just... Uh, it is down from here and... Uh, yeah. But I mean, well, can, can can you blame him? I mean, all all he knows about Islam is from his friend Muhammad Hijab, the part-time stripper who like to show off, will pull his shirt off in a, in a heartbeat to show how massive he is. So, yeah. so Tate doesn't know any better. Look at look at the uh, look at his Dawah examples. Yeah, that because that is a separate topic. Okay, that is a separate topic. The scholars have discussed is the thigh part of the aura, etc., or whatnot. That's a fiqh discussion, separate topic. Has he disrespected the Quran? He was showing everything but his penis. I'm pretty sure that uh, the way he appeared on that photo is by all standards that I am aware of, by uh, jurisprudential Sunni schools, considered haram. So I don't now, understand what he what he what he's now, on the now, now may, maybe this guy's thinking, ah, but we do have hadiths where Muhammad lifts up his sh lifts up his thumb so a guy can smooch him up and down his side and talk about how that's what he really wanted. And he <laughs> so maybe he's thinking, ah, but Muhammad himself, you know, would uh pull up his uh his dress so guys could smooch his side. Yeah, well, oh, that makes sense. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And you got all these passages, and I saw the whiteness of his armpits and the so, whiteness of his belly and the whiteness. So Muhammad's clearly this is what we're talking about. This taking image. it off in front of everybody. Uh, this this image here. Oh, I already have it over here, right? Okay. This image here is, yeah, this is him. 
Yeah, this is what he's describing. Oh, Tristan, Tristan snuck in and caught me reading the Quran. <laughs> he did it again. I had no idea. Okay, can a person read the Quran and no. the aura is showing? Yes, they can. A person can read the Quran with their aura showing. And actually, when people say stuff like this that you can't, they're speaking without knowledge. Number one. I think I think that is that is true as far as uh, I'm aware. There is a, there is popular um, a popular theory that you are not supposed to uh, to touch the Quran in you know if you don't have your hair covered as a woman or if you're if, if you're not if you're inappropriate clothes. It's it's uh, I think that that is not really true according to the Islamic scholars. Uh, but if you want to touch the pages, you're supposed to um, supposed to have ablution uh, and so on. They're yeah, really I, I think it. the I think the bigger issue is should you be taking a picture of I know, that I know. and it's, then it's sharing like, that? That's the objection. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think that people are actually angry about him reading the Quran in that state. Uh, I think what they're what they're angry about is him having the Quran on uh, his crotch and uh -huh. taking a photo and putting it out there on the internet. Yeah, so maybe he's maybe he's gonna go into that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you speak without knowledge in this way, you make people think the Quran is untouchable. When I'm reading the Quran, I need to be in this situation. And you know, what's funny? This video reminds me of uh, my first video as Sheikh Kibudi. When I <laughs> I made a video which is called uh, "How Muslim Scholars Answer Controversial Questions." Instead of just answering the question, they go into all the all the little details which nobody actually cares about, and <laughs> just get to the point. Man. Situation and this situation etc and whatnot and even me if i'm at home now and i'm relaxing and i'm wearing shorts it's a hot day like it is in london now and we're, we're suffering uh, can i plop the quran down on my balls of course hot day, and i want to be at home and relax no, and by the way today listen that happened and today is a very nice they do get to the point man the quran. i want to go to the park and sit outside read the quran uh in shorts or whatever i can't do that why can't i do that i want to lie down and read the quran why can't i do that allah revealed this book Let's get to the point. Like, for example, there's an imam. I want to use my balls as a Quran stand. Why can't I do that? He mentioned in his book, Nawadir al Usul, that it is better for a person to cover their aura when they're reading the Quran. Yes. Okay. Oh, my God. Nobody cares about that. What Are you guys completely missing the point here? What, what is this? No wonder this guy is, is not He's even popular. reading the Quran. I'll be honest with you. When you zoom in on the picture, I'll be honest. It doesn't even look like he's reading the translation of the Quran. It doesn't look like a translation of the Quran. I know to me it looked like he's reading something else that is Islamic, but it's not the Quran, right? Yeah, I can't even tell. But it was put out there as reading the Quran. Yeah. Okay. Someone in the comments said it might be Sahih Bukhari. I don't know. Okay. Uh, but even if it is the translation of the Quran, that's another thing now. Is the translation of the Quran the Quran? It's not. It's not. <laughs> that's why we are allowed, we give out this the is... translation of the Quran to I think this guy makes videos for torture. Like that's what this guy is actually doing. He's making videos to test people's patience and to mentally torture them. Like why why are you not just getting to the point, man? Yeah, and what, what he's saying is not anything we're we're pointing out. We're not saying, saying hey, hey, anything hey, uh, out. Yeah, we're not saying a man <laughs> by himself who's not taking pictures to post on the internet has to be fully clothed to read something. It's a question of uh, should he have this on his balls and should he be posting pictures of himself in some tight Daisy Dukes with a Quran resting on his junk? That's the question. This dude ain't answering it. Well, let me answer your question. Now, first off, let us talk about what a question is. So some people have a misunderstanding of what a question is. And what when is a misunderstanding? Question, what is a misunderstanding? And when exactly do you misunderstand something? And is it permissible to misunderstand something and to ask a question when you misunderstand something? Man. I mean, imagine you have a concept of a mushroom, <laughs> and your your concept of a mushroom is that it's poisonous. Did the mushroom save? Did the mushroom concept save you? Yeah, sure it did. All right, thank you for thank you thank you everyone for raising this question. Alhamdulillah, and then the comments would be Alhamdulillah, brilliant response, brother. <laughs> man, 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 these people. To even non-Muslims, I don't know what this non-Muslim might do with this translation. Uh, 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 even you know I heard. Thank you. Bye bye. I'm not even gonna. I, I don't even want to know what he's saying. I'm. I'm done. I'm complete. I have uh, no patience left here. I'll tell you what he said. <laughs> a bunch of words. He said. He said a bunch of words. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now, what do you say that we have to first talk about what people mean by words? Now, do they mean words as we understand them, or do they mean words in a different sense? And is it a translation of the word, or is it the Arabic original? Brilliant well, point. Brilliant point. Question. Alhamdulillah. Scholars have discussed in history, in Islamic history, Alhamdulillah, and some scholars have disagreed on what exactly a word is. Uh, okay. 
two of them there. <laughs> is there anything else here? Total misunderstandings. Primary function of a religion, I don't believe it's the religion exists so I can live forever. I mean, that's a, that's a nice thought. But I nice think on the macro level, the primary objective of a religion is to restore and contain some degree of traditional value. Okay, that's true. Now, if I heard that, if I heard somebody say something like that while speaking of Islam, I would think, dude, what? What are you doing? Is this why you're converting people to Islam? Is that the point of Islam? Is that the point that you are given in the Quran? According to Tate. Is that the point that you are? Is is that what Islam is about? Is he that was, what you are supposed to believe? What in the world is this? He was saying that before he converted, and he's still saying that that is that is clearly his view of religion, and this ties into his idea of picking a religion being similar to picking a stock. And the stock uh, will move. That what what is what is going to preserve values that I like the best job preserving those values uh and letting me slide because i'm important letting me slide and do whatever i want what religion is going to do what i want uh and and preserve the values that i like in society uh islam is so i'm going to bet on islam that's that's it, that's his conversion in a nutshell i'm going to and it, so it still hasn't it still hasn't changed yeah if that is Andrew Tate's position on on Islam, which by the way is a terrible investment, uh, then then that would mean that he is not in Islam for the right reasons. Plus, when he explains why he believes in Islam, he's basically expressing that uh, that um, I don't know how to how to put this, but <laughs> that Islam is purely functional and that there's there, it, it's it's not a uh, Wait, what are people saying? We cannot hear? What? We can't hear? What are you talking about? What? Somebody is saying we can't hear. I don't well, know. if someone says, everyone would be saying they can't hear. If, yeah, no, people yeah, hear it. Yeah, that's so just it, a random person. If, 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 that is, if that is the position that he's presenting, then then that would mean that you have no actual, you know, transcendental theological reason uh, or, you know, an existential reason, a reason for the afterlife, you know, to believe in Islam. So, Wow. It's 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 wild, and that is in contradiction. But I'm really wondering what this guy will respond to that. Now, but th but, th but think about it. if he, if he's saying like, as long as you are preserving the values of your society, then yeah. you're doing a bang up job. I mean, communist China does a bang up job yeah. of preserving what what the rulers find uh, most most important. They're doing a bang up job. They will crush anyone who gets out of line. So, I mean, what should should I be like, oh, I want to become a communist and move to China because they do a bang up job of pre preserving the values of their society. I mean, there, there's a question of like what what values, like what values and are those the best values and so on is, is like, you know, for Islam is like child marriage and polygamy and all this stuff. Is that really the values you want to you want to preserve? Apparently, according to Tate. Yeah, of course, religion is there to sustain some traditional well, traditional values throughout our life and to live through the moral compass of Islam. However, we cannot say religion is there just for that reason. And he said, obviously, religion is not there for him to live forever. He might mean maybe living physically forever. But in the sense, for example... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait. By the way, that's even that's even stupid. Islam believes in resurrection. You are resurrected <laughs> in a body, so you do live physically forever. How in the how in the name of common sense you're going to be boning virgins forever and deflowering virgins forever if you don't have a body oh well ali dawa i'm not sure if you think everybody is as dumb as you or i'm not sure if you don't understand what is being said because you are dumber than almost everyone that you encounter in a regular society but i don't even know how to respond to this i don't even know how to respond to this of course, that's not what he means, Ali Dawa. Of course, that's not what he means. Of that is course, not what he means. What he means. <laughs> what he means is that it is not about the, you know, the 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 the, the, the transcendental, the 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 forever living and the hereafter. That's not what religion is to him. He, to to him, religion is order in society. To him, religion is uh, functional. It is utilitarian. Maybe ask your friend Muhammad Hijab, who is an expert on philosophy and calls it utilitarian. Maybe he can explain it to you, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is the dumbest thing I've heard. This is awesome. Uh, 
maybe he means you know living forever like never dying like physically you know maybe he thinks islam is not about finding the you know the the, the alchemy of of living eternally and dude well, what's the plan of forever however we can value throughout our life and to live through the moral compass of islam however we cannot see religion is there just for that reason and he said obviously religion is not there for him to live forever he might mean maybe living physically forever but in the sense for example if we look at the quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it is he who created life and death to test you and so that it can be proven unto proven who has the best of actions so very clearly this means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he has created us for the purpose that he can test us and Allah says in the Quran that we have not created for no other reason except to worship him our whole life everything that we do should be for the sake of God and in his worship and his remembrance and Allah says so therefore this is in complete contradiction with what uh, Andrew Tate said and is unacceptable to us uh, what Andrew Tate said is unacceptable right Ali Dawa right can, can, can you pull up a Quran verse yes 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 I can I can do everything that I that you asked me to do check out Surah 9 Verse 111. 111. Surah 9, 111. Let's get that on the screen right now. I believe that's the verse I'm thinking of. Indeed, Allah has purchased from the believers their lives and their properties in exchange for that they will have paradise. They fight in the cause of Allah, so they kill and are killed. Uh, there's a true yeah, promise so, on him. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so anyway, look at the point here. Allah has purchased from the believers their lives and their properties so that they will have paradise. That's the that's the point, right? Like I picked out low. Allah hath bought from the believers their lives and their wealth because the garden will be theirs. This, this is called this is called the verse of the barter or something like that, the exchange, right? Mm -hmm. It's Allah, you're giving Allah your lives and properties in exchange for paradise. And Tate says. Ah, oh, it's a nice thought that you, that you'll get paradise, but that's not the point. It's like, wait, Allah says that's the point. That's what you're here for. That's the, that's the deal of converting to Islam. You give him your life and your property, and he gives you paradise in exchange. They fight in the cause of Allah, so they so they kill and are killed. See, this is actually a miracle. Andrew Tate mentions that you know, uh, you know, it, betting on a stock and investing in stock and buying it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and Islam would be the best stock to buy. And here, this verse is obviously talking about uh, exchange, like a stock exchange, where Allah, uh, you know, buys your lives for you know, sort of to give you paradise. And this is actually a miracle. This just shows one more time that Islam is true, and Andrew Tate confirmed the truth of Islam. Alhamdulillah. Yep. That's the point here, man. Thank you for bringing this up, David. In the Quran also, we, we did not create this worldly life for enjoyment and fun. There is a purpose. You know, that's why Allah says in the Quran, al -hakum -ut -takathur, hatta -zurtum -ul Oh, and then, see? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> see, now I'm refuted. Yeah, that makes sense. We said a bunch of words. <laughs> Allah says in the Quran, you are busy with the worldly affairs and, you know, race, this race that you're in, this rat race you're in, until you visit the graves. And then you will surely know. So God Almighty is telling us, this world is temporary. The bigger goal is what? The eternal living, which the, is what? We're going to live. So therefore, Andrew Tate is wrong, right? Forever. Our souls are going to live forever, which is paradise or hell. And for those who are still saying, no, you're just making up, you know, just defending. No. Look at this next video that he's... <laughs> oh, my. He just preached a bunch of stuff that is in complete contradiction with, Andrew Tate, with what Andrew Tate said. And then he dismisses those people who are saying, oh, you're just defending him now. And Again, this this is a guy who does not believe you need to be honest <sighs> at all. I'm not talking about right here. I'm saying he's basically admitted it in the other things he said. Uh, as long as you're keeping people in Islam. Uh, and how do you do that? By saying lots of words. And if you say some of those words in Arabic, even more powerful. But just say a bunch of words, a mixture of English and Arabic, and your followers are dumb enough to think that you've actually defended what Tate has said and shown that he's actually a good devout Muslim so they get to keep that that big old dawa trophy on the mantle Alhamdulillah. 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 It makes a lot of sense he said if I could lie right now uh-huh million dollars and nobody would find out nobody I still couldn't do it because God would know that and he'd punch wait him. what <laughs> what is this the guy who that's not my website is that the same guy? 
I never said that. And then there's and then they play post videos of him saying it. That the same guy. This is funny. If you offer me ten billion dollars and I would never get caught, I would not lie. If I could lie right now for ten million dollars and nobody would find out, nobody, I still couldn't do it because God would know and He'd punish me sooner or later. I really truly believe that I would pay the price of that way. I truly believe. So, um, what's interesting here is he says he would not lie even for ten million dollars if if nobody knew he would not lie because he knew and he truly believes that God would know and God would punish him sooner or later. No, I, I, I personally think that is a lie. <laughs> Very I, ironically. <laughs> I mean, unless he had a brand new change of heart, <laughs> all these times, I mean, the, the best description of what he does online is, is the psychological term is gaslighting, right? Gaslighting. It's he has said something. We've got video of him saying it, and he'll just completely deny it. He'll just. Completely I recorded deny a video it about it. I recorded a video about it. I still, I'm still supposed to publish it, but I can bring it up here quickly. Keep talking. Dude. Keep it it, rem it reminds me of. Uh, um, I saw a clip of Hijab. I think in his interview with Jordan Peterson, where he says the the most important the most important thing to me as a Muslim is always keeping your word. And I was like, when have you not broken your word? Like, I mean, every every debate you're in, you demand the Muslim side demands all these rules. You agree to them, and then you break all of them. Like everything is deception. So where where you get it's like they it, it's just like with. Wanting to be called the religion of peace, no matter how many people you're slaughtering, right? It's like we want to do one thing. As long as we say the opposite, then we're good. Because all that matters is that you're claiming it and you get that reputation. But I mean, Tate, Tate seems like a compulsive liar. Like compulsive, unable to function without lying. And so for him to say, you offer me $10 billion, so I don't lie. Serious. Be serious, man. And does uh, he? I mean, Alidawa says obviously he does believe in God, he does believe in the afterlife because this is what he's also saying in the video. Um, now I never, I never said Andrew Tate is consistent, right? <laughs> and um, if I try to make sense of this, what would I, what would I think? Maybe he does actually believe in Allah, maybe he's just conflicted on, on the existence of Allah, maybe he is just trying to. Maybe he's just really lying here in this instance and trying to make it look like he believes in Allah and he will be punished. Maybe he just perceives Allah as a concept, as he explained earlier, where he would be later in life punished for lying earlier because it would somehow get around and come back to you. Yeah, given his con I mean, given his concept of having a concept of God, yeah, uh, you could say like that when you're converting to a religion, you know, if you're a, uh, if you're shipwrecked on an island, one island, they'll kill you and eat you. And the other, because they have a belief in some God that won't, that says don't eat people, that that concept, even though it's not, doesn't correspond to reality, that the concept saved your life. He, it's, it seems like he may believe that, well, if you're going to go join that island tribe and become one of them, then you have to believe in it. You have to, it's not that it, it's not that it's real or anything, but now you have to believe in that God and what that God says. And so I don't know if he's just saying, hey, you know, this is the concept that's best. And therefore, I have to believe now that in the punishments, it, it seems incoherent. It just seems like yeah. like it you can't you can't actually you can't actually fit these claims together. Yeah, he's not consistent. But here, this is very interesting. Your website uh, is this. This is not very loud to Your me. Right words. It's on my website. Yes, it is. No, it's not. On CobraTate.com, I have my... Wait. So she's she's referring to CobraTate.com, and she says, hold your up, website. Up, and he says, your not website. my website. Your words. It's on my website. Okay, um, just to quickly get this yes, up here. Is. So uh, what I, I, I posted about this as well. Um, during the interview, she quotes him. Is this video no, just like this? On CobraTate.com, I have my PhD program. It's the website you've taken down, and I wonder why those comments have been taken down. That teaches basically how I got girls, how I met girls, how I got girls to like me, how I got girls to fall in love with me to work on webcam for me. You have said you emotionally manipulated oh, yeah. people here for your own financial gain. No, absolutely not. 
Because that's what I did. That was my, my MO was find girls, make them love me and make them work for me. And that's how I got rich. Your website, your words. It's not my website. Yes, it is. Your okay, uh, this video doesn't include the whole part where she actually quotes him precisely on what he what he says. Uh, yeah, but th that's that's the idea. She quotes she quotes this website, and he says that's not my website, even though that was cobratate.com. And he says that's not my website, and she says, yeah, what you what you say is blah blah blah. And he goes, no, 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 that that's not that's not what I say. And then what someone did afterwards, because he just denies that that this is his website. And that this was his methodology using women for financial gain. And then someone just spliced it together with him actually saying in in early, you know, previous interviews, um, yeah, that's my website. And yes, that's exactly what I do. And so were you lying back then when you said it's your website and that's what you do? Or are you lying now when you're saying that's not your website and that's not what you do? But either what you're lying there, you're lying then or you're lying now. I think you're lying now. I think he's lying now. Yeah. You see? So here, here's the part. Here's the part. Let's see. Romania. I'm beholden to the Romanian legal system, and I'm not going to incriminate myself. Let me read you then what you have said about what you have done. Sure. You have. He's quoting him precisely. Pay attention. Maybe I, I would. I would love to put it side by side, but we can go through. Said my job was to meet a girl, go on a few dates, sleep with her. Get her to fall in love with me to the point where she'd do anything I say and then get her on webcam so we, we could become rich together. I don't think that's what I personally said. I think that's, that's exactly what no, you said that's, on your that's, website. That's, that's, no, I've never said that. That's something that you found on the internet. It doesn't mean I've said it. In and, your and, and again, once again, if any female. On so uh, he's never said that. Never said that. That's something that you found on the internet. Doesn't mean I said it. Um, he then f go, goes on and further uh, claims that the BBC has a reputation for making things up, and this is just one of those things that they made up just to uh, just to frame him. And this here is directly from his website, as she just said, from cobradate.com slash PhD slash program, uh, which they or hyphen program, which which is now taken down. This site doesn't exist anymore, maybe because they realize this is very incriminating. So it's, it says, my job was to get women to fall in love with me. Literally, that was my job. My job was to meet a girl, go on a few dates, sleep with her, test if she's quality, get her to fall in love with me to where she'd do anything I say, and then get her on webcam so we would become rich together. Whether you disagree or agree with that, uh, with what I did with their loyalty, submission, and love for me doesn't matter. You cannot reject the results, and the results are simple. My girlfriends would do more for me than 99% of men's wives would do for them. This is only part of uh, of how he explains his, uh, his MO, where he um, also then uses a a bottom woman to come and manipulate the conversation and she's specifically trained to tell this new girl that everything is amazing and everything goes very very well and you make so much money and then he also sets them up and lies to them about, about what they are supposed to do and lies about their earnings and takes most of it while giving them less and <laughs> you have it right here you, you know it's funny you could uh you could take you could you could Photoshop the Quran into a bunch of those pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the, like those girls have those Quran and all those pictures. And based on what this, uh, that other, that other dude said, when he said a bunch of words, if he says, is there any, is there any rule that you have to be fully clothed when you're reading the Quran? No. Uh, so these, these, uh, these girls could, you could be selling, you, you could be, you could be sharing all these pictures of, uh, these, these women holding Qurans and it would be totally fine according to the, uh, Tate defenders. But in, in that short clip, that like 34 second clip, it's actually him saying again, that's my website and that's what I do. And he completely, he almost word for word repeats what he does. And yet when the BBC asked him about it, not my website. And no, I've never said I've never said that that that's what I do when it's on okay. his website. And then we actually have video of him saying that's what he does. And this is the same guy saying he would not lie for ten million dollars because he believes that we, he would be judged by God. It's <laughs> like and guys, here's here's we talk about that. We talk about this in reference to the Dawa guys. But you can say the same thing in regard to uh andrew tate fans you can say it with anyone who sort of rallies a group around them and develops cult-like qualities you could right now you could you could test this if you if you wanted to you could line up 1000 andrew tate fans show them what the website says show them what the methodology says 
show a clip of Andrew Tate saying, yes, that is my website. Go to my website. And Andrew Tate saying, yes, this is my methodology. This is what I do. I get them to fall in love with me so that I can then get them to become my webcam girls. Show videos of him saying that and then show the BBC clip of him saying, that's not my website. I've never said that. That's not what I do. And show a clip of him saying, you could pay me $10 million to lie. I would not lie. And ask his thousand followers, do you see Do you see any discrepancy in any of this? 1,000 out of 1,000 Andrew Tate fans will say, we see, we'll, we'll say we, we see no problem here. None. And it's, it, again, the parallel is with the, with the Dawa guys. We told them this. We told them this. Uh, Fareed actually put it to the test. Can you spot the discrepancy between... Sheikh Yasser Qadi saying there is not one variant in one single letter anywhere between any two Qurans. And then uh, Yasser Qadi saying, yeah, of course, there are all sorts of variants in different parts, different Muslims in different parts of the world have different Qurans. Do you see any disagreement between that? They didn't. And that's a guy, that's that's one of their enemies. Uh, Fareed's fans do not like Yasser Qadi. They still couldn't see it. Uh, they've just been pro. They've just been so incredibly programmed to do what's expected of them that they, they just always side with with their guy. And it's uh it's amazing that these, uh, again, guys, uh, be aware of gaslighting. Um, once you've got your fans, you can say this, th and this really, this really ties really well into Islam, that you go back, Muhammad re would reveal one thing one day, a couple of weeks later, he reveals something that absolutely contradicts it. His followers never seemed to notice. It was the when, when Surah 2 verse 106, which talks about abrogation was revealed, the historical background is that the pagans were pointing out, why does your guy reveal something and then two weeks later contradicts himself? How's it possible? How are you not spotting this? And that's when, oh, yeah, yeah, because Allah, Allah changes, you know, changes his revelations and abrogates uh, earlier and then gives you something better. But Muhammad's, Muhammad's companions couldn't see it. And so you just get programmed, programmed to not notice when someone is completely changing the story over and over and over again. And Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate could come on, could go live on Rumble tomorrow and say, of course, that was my website. And of course, I said that that's been my method all along. The next day he could say, I've never said that. It's only a lie. People took that out of context. And then the next day he could say, of course, I said it. And they would they just wouldn't notice. I can also tell you why um, why he is now denying uh, in trying to suppress what he actually said in the past on that website, he is denying that because, uh, you know, if, if you are under a criminal investigation, which he right now is for very, very serious things uh, by one of the highest authorities in uh, in, in, in in Romania by law, uh, you have to be very careful about the, the evidence that you put out there and the stuff that she just quoted there, which he said, I never said that, is... In Romania and across Europe, very well known to be a method known as the lover boy method, where uh, people who uh, engage in human trafficking and pimping and in other things uh, lure women and test them and then uh, make them fall in love with them and promise them all kinds of things like, oh, you know, we, we're going to be together. You, you, you're going to be my only one. I love you so much. I love you more than all these other people. And, you know, we're going to be. We're going to be a, a, we're going to be a dream together and then they lure them into becoming employees for them and doing sexual stuff while also using second parties employees as uh as, as people who engage in the manipulation of those of those new women who are lured into this business this is, this is known as the lover boy method in romania which by the way has been for decades plagued by uh, human trafficking and pimping and stuff like that, which is also very interesting that Andrew Tate uh, would choose that place, which is known for human trafficking. Romania is very, very well aware with this method and with human trafficking rings and all that. So this is why he specifically tries to suppress this very incriminating quote that he repeatedly said on many different occasions. The thing is, he can deny this all he wants on BBC on the interview, but pretty sure Romanian authorities already have uh, all the evidence of how they exactly described their business on their websites and in other videos. They probably have all of that among the evidence. And the Romanian authorities also announced that they are going to, I think at the end of this month, officially charge the two and start the, the trials. And 
it doesn't look good. <laughs> no, this, this, is the, is... this is the liar, the poster boy right now. So yeah, I mean, I mean, think about this. If you're a lawyer, I, I don't know how courts work in Romania, but a a prosecuting attorney in the United States is just going to ask him, um, "Do you lie? W would are you going to lie to protect yourself right now?" No, no, no. I would never lie. I believe I believe in God. I believe in God. Okay. Uh, did you say this on your website? Oh no, that no, that's not my website. Okay, here's another video of you uh, saying that it is your website and that that is your method. Um, were you lying here? Uh, and they're just going to keep there. Again, here in the U.S., they would just keep playing clips. And by by the end of just going through a few minutes of that and getting his responses, n no one on that jury is going to trust this guy at all. It's going to be like this guy will lot will will lie to protect himself on the drop of a dime. Anything he says in his own defense is complete garbage right now. Um, so that that's that problem. As far as the lover boy method, just so people understand it, so you can explain it to others. All Andrew Tate did, he took a method that was a standard approach of pimps, actually, you know, pimping prostitutes. And he just applied it to online webcam stuff. He used the exact same method. But there are got, I mean, there, there are pimps in major cities will find the train station where they know that girls run away, like girls who run away from the middle of nowhere, they'll, they'll run away and go to the city. They'll run away and go to the city. They'll run away from their parents and go to the city. So they have people like keeping an eyes on the train station to see when like a confused 14 year old shows up and just looks lost in the city. And then it's, oh, hey, what, what's going on? Oh, do, uh, do you need a place to stay? No problem. And what they'll do is they will treat her like a princess. They will treat her like a princess for a while. They'll get the girl to fall in love with the guy. Uh, he'll be having sex with her and so on. He will get her addicted to drugs. He will eventually get her to, to have sex with a friend. Oh, yeah, have sex with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's my friend. That, that's fine. And, and I own, you know, I own something. And then once that started, eventually uh, you're you're a prostitute and you don't even know that the transition and any pimp could tell you exactly what the method is. But people don't know about it. So they fall for it. Andrew Tate champion of virtue and justice who would never do anything wrong because he believes in God. Uh, that was his entire method for getting rich until he found out it was actually easier to convince a bunch of young guys that you're the, uh, you know, you're the champion of masculinity. And uh, that was, that way's easier. Wait, hold on, hold this, hold on. He, he, he explicitly um, in the past, we played those videos and we played, played those videos before he explicitly said that his whole job was you know, consisted of lying to people, lying to callers, pretending that that um, that these women are, you know, they need help, and you know, like whining and crying on the phone to these lonely guys at home, so that they send money and make donations and things like that. And he was basically exploiting people. It was a giant scam, as he called it. The same guy is now sitting here and saying, "Oh, even if I, you know, I was offered ten million dollars, I would never lie because, you know." I would be scared that God would punish me. And <laughs> it's just, wow, man. This is just ridiculous. And these people, this guy is now the poster boy here. This guy is now the new the new face of Muslims whom people like Ali Dawa use. Wow, man. And Wild think about it. I mean, I mean, I'm not if if someone has actually if you've been a scumbag in your life. I mean, most of my friends have been total scumbags at some point in life. You see, uh, this if is you've been, if you've been a scumbag and done horrible things at some point in your life, and you've actually changed course, renounced all of that, and you spend the rest of your life trying to do better, I, I would, I would be a total fan of Andrew Tate. If he's like, guys, yeah. here's what I did. Here are all the things that I did. That was bad. All you young guys, who bought into this and thought, oh, you're going to go get girls to fall in love with you and become your webcam girls. Guys, do not do that. You are yeah. treating people who are created in the image of God as objects that have no purpose other than to get you money. Stop doing that. That's evil. Stop it. If you were if you were to do, come out like that, renounce everything and say, I, I renounce it all. Um, and now I'm, I'm going to spend the rest of my life trying to do the right thing. I, I'd be like, Awesome. I will I will cheer for you as you're doing this. All yeah. we ever get is, no, I never did that. I never said that. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's taken out of context. And it's like, I can't take you seriously right now. It wasn't I me. can't take you seriously. When you're saying that's your website and that's your method, that's not something that ripped out of ripped out of context. Yes, there's a, lar a longer interview, but unless what you said right before that was, 
Uh, if I were lying right now, I would say that was my website and that that was my method. And, you know, they cut they cut off the, the fact that you're saying that that you would be lying if you said that, unless that's it. It's very clear what you're claiming. It's very clear that you're claiming that's your website and that that's your method. That's indisputable. Uh, if you have some context that shows that's not what you're really saying, by all means, show that to us. But you can't because it's obviously what you're saying. And yet he's saying, well, me... I never I never said that. That's never been my position. This guy's going to get dis if this if this goes to trial, this guy is going to get obliterated on stage. And he's too much of a narcissist. One 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 tragic flaw that narcissists have. They believe they can take on the world. They believe that they can outsmart everyone. They believe that you can send all the prosecuting attorneys and everyone on. I will talk my way out of it by my brilliance. And. He's gonna, they're going to rip him to shreds, man. He's going to be destroyed, just like the scientific miracles in the Quran narrative. And just like the the Quran's perfect preservation narrative, he is going to be destroyed just like that. Wow. But in court, he's just going to sit there and he'll say, wasn't me. Yeah. Wasn't me. <laughs> that, wasn't. that should be. That should be. Is this you in this video? Wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> this is you right here. Wasn't me. <laughs> They, oh, don't you know that the Matrix could do CGI? Have you seen the Flash movie? They do massive amounts of CGI. How do we know that that's not CGI? <laughs> that's what he's going to be. That's what he's got to do something like that. Like, how, yeah. what else can you say? All right, I think we're done with this. Uh, nonsense. Right. Nonsense. Fine. Uh, so Muslims never again come with the scientific miracles of the Quran. Al Dawa called it nonsense. Listen to him. I called it nonsense. Don't listen to me. David Wood called it nonsense. Don't listen to him. We are enemies of Islam. Listen to Ali Dawa. He said it is nonsense. Nonsense. Wrong reasons to believe in Islam. So please don't come with this anymore. It's garbage. Yeah. <clears throat> Jesse Bright said, Why do Dari start reciting things in Arabic when they're oh, already read it, right? Yeah. This Jesse Branch said, You want to break a Muslim? Ask I don't want to break this. No, I don't want to be violent. You want to break a Muslim? Ask him if Allah existed before creation. Yes. Then ask if he has uh, always had his 99 names. Yes. Now I'll ask him how Allah is called the creator before creation. What was the, he the king of? Well, I could say, I mean, I could respond to that honestly by saying that. He is, by definition, the creator because it is meant to. He's meant to create, and you know, I would, I would not see theologically and logically with that a huge problem. But I get your point. Yeah, yeah same thing with uh, with the merciful. Who is he showing mercy to? And you would, you would say, if you're a Muslim, well, even prior to creation, he knows from all eternity that he's going to create things yeah. that will that he will then be merciful to. But the, but the idea the the, the the point that's raised as a criticism is if he is eternally the merciful, then it's like he's not complete. He's not complete or or can't quite exhibit his attributes without creation. And so he never has a chance to exhibit his um, he can't exhibit his attributes if he doesn't create. And you actually have Hadith along those lines that uh, if if if. If human beings didn't sin, then Allah would wipe us out so that we would sin and create people yeah. who would sin so that he could then be merciful towards him. But uh, so that they would respond something like that. But yeah, I agree. You could you could say he is eternally something that he knows is only going to be fulfilled at some point. But it is it is good to bring it up so to get people to start thinking about these things. Yeah, yeah. And Allah is also merciful because he's very merciful to pimps and stuff like that. So and to Andrew Tate. Yeah, yeah, as long yeah. as long as you're as long as you're popular. Yeah. Al Dawa is jihadi John confirmed. Messed up. <laughs> I don't know what that was in reference to, but yeah. Could, you know jihadi John? He was that yeah. he was that that G that that uh that ISIS yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, but, but I don't know why this Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine Ali Dawa on the battlefield? Let's go kill these guys, let's go behead these guys in the name of Allah. I'd be like, how do you stop from laughing at his orders? <laughs> Um, Shine Vaman Zadigan said, uh, Sahih Muslim 2277, Sunnah of Prophet Top G. Sneaker reported that Allah's Messenger Top G is <laughs> saying, I recognize a Bugatti which used to pay me salutations before my advent as a prophet, and I recognize that even now. That's powerful. <laughs> my new favorite hadith. <laughs> that is the, the reference to, what was that, the tree that was giving him, uh, was, was greeting like him. I do like the Sahih Bugatti. Sahih Bugatti. Yeah, that's good. 
Uh, great Grand Imperial Landcap said, Anidawa looks like that ninja guy from the Caliphate. He even sounds and has mannerisms like him. Oh, I guess that's with the with the Jihadi John reference or something like that. Maybe, maybe. Uh, great Grand Imperial Landcap said again, search Ali's house for several They're really days. going off on Ali Dawa being like, and if if it were someone who are who are actually you know peaceful and non-violent, we'd be saying, "Hey, don't rep don't misrepresent him." But Ali Dawa is the guy who says he wants to be watching as they behead people like the apostate prophet. So, uh, but what you could say is he doesn't believe in actually doing it right now. He believes in working towards a society where it will eventually be done. Yeah. To be to be fair, to be fair, I mean, I would not want to misrepresent people. Who like want to kill you. and say that and say that they would want to you know come out here and kill me right now i would never do that uh especially if they want to kill me yeah exactly uh david so i i, I have to set this straight that he only wants to wants me uh, killed and watch and be happy about it uh and be proud about it in the future uh, in his ideal world so let's not get this messed up here yeah he wants so he wants to see the streets flowing with the blood of apostates but he's but not, not actually, now he's not actually doing it so therefore there's no reason at all to be concerned about him spreading his message and yeah. and if you oppose his message which calls for the eventual mass execution of people like ap you have to be a bigot and a racist because there's no other explanation for why you would oppose obviously. what he's preaching obviously obviously alhamdulillah um Stephen the Bell that said I in, in before Tate jumps ship and becomes China fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ch yeah. China's actually better. So yeah. now I'm gonna be an atheist communist. <laughs> uh and, Imam... and, and I'm gonna be Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Imam is so hey, this this is you, Imam is so fat. Hey, they stole mine. They stole mine. <laughs> they stole the. <laughs> we wanted that. We we're gonna have Imam Al Safat, Imam Al Safat. Get it, guys? Imam Al Safat and Shaky Booty. Uh... Yeah, working together as the two great Imams. They stole it. Imam Al Safat or, or, said, or opposing each other. One's a Shia. Yeah, that would be funny. That would be good. Imam Al Safat said, uh, "Met hijab a week ago on my way to work. Said he made me convert, and what said he made me convert and to keep up the great work. Always happy to do my part in helping Islam implode on itself." But I don't get him. Oh no, no, he's saying he met hijab, and that he said he said to hijab, "Hey, you made me convert," and he said, <laughs> and, he said "And I told him to keep up the great work." <laughs> He said, so he's basically saying he was encouraging Muhammad Hijab <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. To, to, to help Islam implode faster. Okay. But okay. by the way, the, that, that is something that's happening. It's like, a, I mean, why is Islam being absolutely, I mean, destroyed? Like everyone's going after it. Hindus, atheists, Christians, everyone's blasting away. Whereas 10 years ago, I mean, even with all the terrorist attacks, people weren't as interesting, I I interested in the topic. But if you go back, there were still like massive numbers of people who really thought, oh, what are you talking about? I have a Muslim professor. He's really nice. I have a Muslim neighbor. She's really nice. What is all this talk about terrorism? That's just got to be these, you know, these, these, this, this small, small minority of extremists. And every ideology has this tiny minority of extremists. Therefore, it has it has nothing really to do with Islam. That was the claim. But then when all of the guys start coming out and proclaiming this stuff, when, when their popular da'is are coming out saying they want to kill you, when their popular da'is are coming out defending child marriage and all these things, then it's it changes the perception. It's like, wait, it isn't some tiny minority of extremists. This is actually mainstream Islam. The know. people who've been presented as this, you know, this, this, uh, this uh, tolerance loving group, that's act, that's actually the, the minority or people who aren't taking it very seriously. But it, it, at the very least, there is a big, big problem that it, that has mass popularity in Islam. And then they start attacking it and so, I mean, the reason for this implosion, at least that it's happening this fast, is that, I mean, notice you you went from uh, people like Ahmed Didad and Zakir Naik, they're, they're massive liars. They're, they're terrible. I mean, they, they're off, off, they're horrible in the amount of lies they were telling. But 
they weren't these condescending, arrogant people who are insulting everyone around them and, and heaping threats and abuse on people. They're just, you know, they're they're doing dawa and using lots of deception. But then you've got the new generation of online Muslims, and it's like, ah, we'll insult and threaten everyone into keeping their mouths shut. And you get the backlash finally forming, and now everyone's after them. And so these are the guys for the who are the biggest source and cause of the downfall of dawah and it's awesome and so it yes we, we should be encouraging people like muhammad ajab ali dawa daniel hakikachu sheikh uthman yeah. all those guys they're awesome never forget mentioning daniel kikachu i think daniel kikachu is uh, is personally my greatest hope for uh the future collapse of uh, of, of islam and online dawah he's doing an exceptionally good job and Phenomenal. i can also take credit for making him so popular and, and that, that he, he told me the same thing that it was me who made him uh popular to begin with so uh i'm very happy with with, with the results here and other people that have said the same thing so yeah hakikachu anyone out there with any access to media anything uh, if you want to get someone on to explain Islam and explain some of the basic moral principles, by all means, get Daniel Hakikachu. He, whoever is interviewing him, he will probably destroy because he'll, he'll be interviewed by someone who doesn't know much and he'll be quoting sources, completely misrepresenting them. But who cares? That's acceptable in Dawah. He will completely destroy who's ever asking him questions. Um, but. And and his fans will think, wow, what a bang up job! He defended child marriage and wife beating and <laughs> and sex slaves and all that. What a great job he did defending all these Islamic concepts. And everyone else who's watching will be going, wait, that is what Islam teaches? That's not just a lie spread by Islamophobe. That's actually what Islam teaches. Oh my goodness! And it will be a beautiful, I beautiful no sight. Hate. We didn't know. We didn't no way, did no. <laughs> All right. Um, Gray what Gray's one seven four. Thank you. Said not sure if this is the type of content you want to cover on stream because of terms of service. But Sneeko debating Nick Fuentes on Islam is a pretty interesting angle of this discourse. I didn't know that happened, but that would wait, be. Wait, wait, wait. wait. It, it, that, it, did that happen? Is that supposed to happen? What What is this? What uh, are you telling me? That would be absolutely hilarious. Those brilliant religious scholars debating Islam. That would be awesome. For those who are not aware, uh, Nick Fuentes is a is a uh, white nationalist, white separatist, white separatist um, Hitler fanboy who is who wants to abolish democracy and install total fascism under uh, Catholic nationalism which is a an interesting concept that developed over the last decades. Uh, and that guy would then be debating, his friend, Sneeko, who is also uh, pretty much in agreement with him on many of the, these things, they would be debating Islam. So I'm um, not even sure that if that actually happened, or if that's supposed to happen, or if we're just playing with fantasies here, but that would be very, very interesting to me. People were uh, sharing a tweet yesterday from Sneeko. I went to, I then went to his uh, his Twitter feed and it was it was gone. So I'm assuming People started making fun of him, and then he took it down. But the, but I don't know that. I, I mean, it's possible that someone could have photoshopped it or something like that. But the tweet that was shared was, um, some news agency said that Japan has rage has raised the age of consent from thirteen to sixteen, and Sneeko Sneeko replied, "This is my nine <laughs> eleven. This is like." like this is this is his 911 raising the raising the age of consent of Japanese girls to thir from 13 to 16. Wow. <laughs> that's the new that's the new poster boy of Dawa. I mean, it's the new poster boy. Okay, I know I now see a video on Sneeko's channel which is titled on on Rumble because he's not allowed on YouTube. Um which says Nick Fuentes and Zerka who is a friend of Sneeko an Albanian guy. Nick Fuentes and Zerka debate Sneeko on Islam. That was 24 days ago. I don't know. I need to check this out. And I, saw, I saw a tweet. I saw a tweet or a reply or something from that Zerka dude, but he was pretty brutal making fun of Muhammad. So I don't know. Uh, I know. My wife sent I, me I a tweet know. that he made, and I was like, I, I, I cracked up. I started laughing, and I said, this is, this is too much. I would never 
say this, but he, he says some really messed up things about Muslims and Islam. And he's 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 friends with Sneeko. He's hanging out with him all the time. Yeah, so it's very interesting. Um, I think one tweet that he made was like, uh, if you look at the, the 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 difference in IQ between Christians and Muslims, it all starts making sense or something like that. He, he tweeted, and people were going. <laughs> We're very, very angry about it. That's funny. <laughs> uh, Odenoki said, do you believe AT is genuine in his belief? Andrew Tate is genuine in it. I don't think so at all. I have, I don't think for a second that he actually believes in Islam and actually has his, you know, he gave his heart to it, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think if you just take what he says seriously, if you take his stock market comments and so on, his claim about, ah, you know, concept, the concept can save you and things like that. Um, it looks like a, it looks like a combination of factors of him. Like there may be elements of that. Like here are the things that I want a society to preserve and Islam is going to do a better job of that. So I'm going to, you know, invest in that. Like I would invest in the stock market and, there also seems to be um, an element of, I know these guys are going to defend me no matter what. Uh, atheists aren't going to do it. Christians aren't going to do it. There's only one group in the world that's going to be so excited about hearing that someone converted that they will give me a free pass on everything. There seems to be an element of that. And uh, it, it, we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. You always could have people, you know, hey, we'll give you $10 million if you convert and defend Islam. I don't know any of that. But, uh, or... It's possible that he's entirely sincere and just has some really stupid ideas about things. But if I had, if I, if I had to bet in the stock market, I would bet that Andrew Tate is not actually <laughs> gen genuine in his belief. And this stock is going to do very, very well. Um, I mean, you can already tell by some of the things, like the whole publicity stunt, the whole uh, carrying a Quran in open sight with him while he's being escorted by Romanian authorities, uh, by Romanian, Romanian law enforcement, and all that, uh, posting pictures of himself with the Quran. It's just, it's, I don't know. I don't see anything genuine there. Kitty said, I love you guys. AP, please say Alhamdulillah. I'm, I'm saying it all the time. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. We love you too. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, because he praises, he, he, AP has already said he believes in Allah as a concept. So he yeah. can praise that concept. I am an atheist and an ex Muslim, and I believe in Allah as a concept. Uh, Leon said, Tate is the best thing to happen to Islam. Either they defend him and expose Islam completely or defend him and expose Islam completely. Win-win. Yeah, well, that's that's fantastic. Right? Thank you so much, Leon. I appreciate that. I, I, I think it is brilliant that he's actually a Muslim right now. <laughs> it's brilliant. Uh, 10010110110 said, uh, Alhamdulillah, thank you and keep fighting for the truth concerning Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you Jannah and protect you from the hellfire. Thank you. We appreciate that very much. Um, 12 Watch said, Hey AP, I'm a Jew whose family comes from Uzbekistan and Tajikistan. What's your thoughts on the Talmud and why are so many people so critical? I, I think this is a trap. This looks like a trap. <laughs> trying to get, try to get you to. <laughs> To defend the Talmud and say something, some some bad stuff. Or yeah, how how familiar are you with the Talmud? Me, I am. Um, I mean, I sat down. There, there is a website which is uh, Sefaria, uh, where they offer um, different translations and the, and the original Hebrew text of the of the of the Talmud, and where there is a lot of commentary on it. I read quite a bit of the of the Talmud, uh, different parts of it um not not like from beginning to end not in a, yeah in a I, i've i've only order. read i've only read the parts that are actually relevant like if something comes up yeah. uh like passages of the quran which were uh ripped off from the talmud i've read those parts and so on like uh um you know surah 5 verse 32 if anyone kills a man it's as if he's killed all mankind quote from the talmud uh and some of the other things that dawah guys use all my familiarity but yeah it's a collection of commentaries from people like rabbis and so on and there's some horrible stuff in there there's some good stuff in there what i mean i can say to... um i saw i have seen over the decades especially when i was a muslim but even after that um there has been this there have been these these memes that have been going around posted initially by nazis uh by new nazis and i'm i'm not saying i'm not calling people new i'm actually saying these are actual new nazis mm -hmm. so actual new nazis put these things out there these uh these posts where like uh 
you know, the Talmud is is demonic, evil. It says this and this and that. And um, it's always the same passages from the Talmud. And I sat down and looked all of those passages up one by one, one by one, and went through all of them. It turned out that uh, some of the quotes were entirely made up. Some of the sources were entirely mm -hmm. made up. Like such a such a book doesn't even exist in the Talmud. Others, others were taken completely out of context. Like the, the, the picture says... Uh, the Talmud says here that all non-Jews are animals, only Jews are humans. When you open it up and, and read it through, what it actually says is that is when the Torah says uh, humans or people, what it refers to here in this case is the Jews, because in because this is about you know Jewish society, whereas in another part it specifically specifies non-Jews. Therefore, when when it says humans here, we have to understand that this is a ruling only for Jews, and th it doesn't say. It doesn't say that only Jews are humans; the others are not. Yeah. But, but they take yeah. this out of context and post stuff like that. So uh, most yeah, of it is complete garbage. While so, while there are some things that are actually problematic that I can say are problematic, you know, uh, in the in the Talmud, and I would I would find them really problematic, and I have an issue with those, obviously. But most of it is blown out of proportion. Very yeah. Hard. So I'm think I'm thinking of terms and guys. At the end of the day, you simply if a Dawa guy is saying what some source says. Whether Islamic or non, you cannot trust that anymore. We are to a point in history you cannot trust anything these guys say. Um, so I'm thinking in terms of like, you do have you do have a commentator who claims that Rebecca was three when Isaac married her and stuff. So you have stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's what one rabbi said, and you'll go to a different one and it'll say she was ten. You'll go to a different one and it'll say she's fourteen. So you can say, hey, this guy who gave the stupidest argument is, I mean. If you look at the guy, why the guy would conclude that she was is like the dumbest thing anyone has ever claimed ever. But you do have stuff like that. And it's yes, yeah, like, I mean, who's who's trying to apply that? I don't know anyone who's trying to apply that, who's trying to impose that on us, who's trying to subjugate the world and make everyone adhere to that. Very different with Islam. And so it's very weird because I hear uh, pretty much every day. I'll say, hey, look, Islam defends child marriage, blah, blah. Why aren't you responding to the Talmud? I don't know. If if the <laughs> if if a bunch of mainstream, main mainline Jews start arguing for child marriage, I will gladly, I will gladly respond. I only know of one group who's actually doing this. That's why we're that's why I'm responding to that. No, right. If 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 um if Judaism was such a huge problem that there were Jews everywhere out there were saying, you know, this is what the Talmud says. According to the Talmud, you are supposed to be put to death. And we are supposed to, you know, we can marry little children. And we will defend this by all means. I would I would have a problem with it. And I would talk mm -hmm. about it. And but we're going to go around. We're going to go executing anyone who leaves the religion <laughs> of Judaism. And we're going to slaughter them all. And then and we're going uh, to. Yeah. We, yeah. Guys, if if, pe I'm, if if Jews were acting like 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 the jihadis and the Dawa guys. Yeah. We'd probably be pretty worried about that and probably want to respond to the yeah, sources yeah. that give rise to these things. Uh, in reality, guys, you have a you have a religion with almost two billion adherents and some of them perfectly nice. Some of them perfectly peaceful and so on. Uh, a. Uh, a you you do have a disturbingly large numbers of them who support things like killing apostates and so on and lots lots of lots of people seem to be easily radicalized and to change their minds in other words once their leaders change their story to oh yeah uh now we now we have to go uh we have to get violent there seems to be large numbers of people who say okay as long as my leader is saying it that's fine and so i have i have zero idea why anyone would expect us to go after something else it's just weird yeah 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 i, I have I, I would i have no issue pointing out stuff in the talmud and saying it is hard i mean there are some parts that actually that i found quite harsh uh where one in one part is uh there is a a commentator in the talmud and that's the that's the thing about the talmud the talmud is, is a bunch of discussions a bunch of commentary and a bunch of back and forth you can find in within the same page two extreme positions disagreeing with each other which is why it is, it is very dumb to say oh look the talmud says this here you can't just take that sole opinion on that one page mm -hmm. because on the same page somebody else might be disagreeing with that that is the whole nature of the talmud yeah. uh they they uh, you know in, in rabbinic judaism they study the talmud and study uh what what the the previous scholar what the previous rabbis have sat down and discussed and how they went through these different topics and their understandings, which is why no rabbi today uh, preaches that the Talmud is a book full of plain laws that you are supposed to read and then word for word adopt and preach. What they do is 
they sit down and they are supposed to, in a scholarly setting, study the Talmud and then take out, uh, you know, the, the 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 teachings and the history and follow the Torah, which they consider the word of, you know, the, the word of God inspired by God, given to Moses. So if, if there are bad things in there, I will acknowledge that and I will say they are pretty bad. Like there is one instance where during a time of heavy persecution, uh, there's actually a part where uh, one of the, the, the commentators says something like, uh, what you're supposed to do is to those non-Jews, uh, what they deserve is to be uh, killed only or something like that. And <laughs> when you read that, that sounds pretty messed up, right? Mm -hmm. But it is a it is a commentary made during that time by a uh, by a specific scholar in a time of persecution as a response to the things that are happening. Is it is it nice? Absolutely not. It's, it sounds it sounds horrendous. It sounds terrible. Mm -hmm. it, but is it a is it a ruling that Jews all believe in and that they adopt and that they spread? No, it's not. So I will point out the truth in it, and uh, completely object to people. Uh, taking things out of context and telling us that we should look at it too. It just, there's no point to it. Yeah. And I notice, uh, notice uh, the Jews are, are fairly unique in this respect and that they just took, uh, they took all these different things their rabbis have said on various issues. If everyone else were to do this, like if, if atheists were to do a compilation of everything atheists have ever said, and Christians were to do a compilation of everything, every, you know, you know, Christian pastor or Christian scholars ever said, and Hindus were to do that with everything every Hindu scholar has said, you could very easily point out a lot of horrible things that yeah. people in bad situations, especially if people ended up where they're massively persecuted or something like this, they tend to, you know, be enraged at whoever's uh, persecuting them and so on. So guys, it's, it's something that you could do uh, with pretty much everyone. Why? In the name of common sense, does everyone keep bringing up the Talmud? Uh, and and uh, apart apart from apart from people just having a problem with Jews, because they're controlling the world and the weather and, and... the banking system in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Anyway, um, enough of that. Yes, the Zerka one. Oh yeah, okay, I'll check it out. I'll have a look. I will see. I I didn't watch it. I'm not very fond of watching those people, but I might have a look. It, it's just weird because again, it's like in the past we've had times when, hey, what are we going to talk about this weekend? Do we have anything important to talk about? And now it's like it's too much. We can't <laughs> respond to it all. We could go live all day, all night, and we could not respond to everything <laughs> to everything that's going on. Yeah, now we have to think. Okay, what are we? Which one do we want to talk about now? Which one should we pick for this weekend? And it's, there's too much. It's crazy. Good guy said, David. Why don't more pastors talk about the 69 weeks prophecy in Daniel, which comes out to Palm Sunday when Jesus rides into Jerusalem, lowly on a donkey? I don't know. Am I the boss of all pastors? <laughs> yeah, of course, obviously. That's why this comment is being made. So. No, I would say. Uh, I would say if you. Um, put it together in a tight in, in a tight form and show uh, what Daniel says, when that would have started, when it was fulfilled, uh, circulate. I know, I know other people have done that. Yeah. I've seen this in apologetics books and so on. Um, but I don't know, maybe lots of people aren't uh, familiar with it. So. Uh, good God guy. Maybe you should call um, the pastor customer service and bring this problem up and make a request for all pastors to do this and yeah that could end up very well all right with this out of the way i think this is all we have for today and uh with that we want to say thank you all for watching thank Tomorrow you we will no. be live on david wood's channel go ahead we especially want to thank ali dawa for Thanks. his for being honest enough to admit <laughs> that has been lying for a long time and he i mean he flat out admitted it that this is all that this is bogus so Nonsense. thank you thank you for that and same thing with farid farid calling out yasser Qadi as a liar for saying there there are no variants in between qurans uh we understand we understand that could be a you know that could be difficult to acknowledge when lies have been told um we look forward to more lies being exposed by the heroes and champions of dawah I am I am wondering what they're gonna what they're gonna be left with now that they're acknowledging that their main arguments for the past 20 years have all been lies. Yeah, yes. 
star hopper made a clarification here. The only thing considered binding in the Talmud are the legal rulings. Everything else, including legal opinions, which were not agreed by the majority of the judges, are non-binding. Yeah, that's that's, that's uh, as far as I know it. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, nothing to do with our topic, nothing to do with what we usually study and talk about. People just like to bring it up because... It's everyone's favorite thing to go to. It's kind. It's kind. It is kind of relevant in the sense that Muslims, Muslim apologists and da'is, when they talk about it in response to something in Islam, they treat it like it's some authoritative book. And what's amazing is they'll treat it like it's even author. So one, they mistakenly treat it as like anything the Talmud says is binding on Jews, and it's not. That's that's yeah. just that's false. Muslims will even present it as binding on Christians. Like I see this in, in their <laughs> Dawah responses and like, oh, so, you know, and you know, according to the Bible, blah, 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 blah. And, and as it's pointed out in the Talmud, they'll act like this is a response to Christians as if I've, I've had it in debates where people are uh, saying, hey, did you know the Talmud says this? What is, what is your, I mean, what is your point? I mean, I mean, it, what's amazing is like, you will act like that's binding on your God and your prophet quoted the Talmud way more than, than I did. So it's, I mean, your God quotes it as if it's the Torah. Your prophet quoted the Talmud as if it's the Torah. And so it's weird to see them use use that as a as a criticism. Yeah, yeah. Um, and your God in the Quran pretends uh, takes a quote that is in the in the in the Talmud and says, "We said to the people of, you know, to the Jews." Do this and this and when we bring it up they think we align but hey it's it's allah who is doing the plagiarizing here he doesn't know he doesn't know checks t9 says go ahead oh i was just gonna say and that may notice it makes sense if you are a seventh century caravan robber Which and you you, are. you hear a jew quote the torah let's say eye for eye tooth for tooth or something like that you hear that and you hear a jew say if anyone kills a man, it's as if he's killed all mankind. Do you know the difference in where they're coming from? If you're your uh, seventh century Arabian caravan robber, no, you, you no. hear the Jews say, citing both, and you don't know the difference. So you then have them in your revelation as the word of all, and you don't know the difference. And yet anyone else would say, okay, one is actual Torah, and one is a commentary by a rabbi, and you don't know the difference. That's a lot because Allah doesn't. That's a problem. Allah doesn't. Allah makes mistakes, all right? Not everybody is perfect. Allah can make mistakes. That he sounds doesn't... like something Andrew Tater Sneaker would say. No, nobody's yeah. perfect. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> Not even Allah. Not Muhammad. My dear Ridwan, I hope you're seeing this comment. We soon hope that your good look alike friend, Shaky Booty, would make a collaboration with Imam Icy. Uh, I think Imam Icy is um, Islam critiqued. Uh, <laughs> I think he recently started a a thing too. Shake a, your booty does look a lot like you, man. Like you guys might be cousins or something. I don't know. I don't see it. I don't really see it. People say that people keep saying that. I don't really see it. But uh might be. I don't know. Uh all right. With that said, thanks everybody for watching. Shout out to uh Ali Dawa for being uh, for making this video possible and for providing us with content to talk about this month, this this week, and also thanks again to that one channel that brought it to my attention, which I mentioned at the very beginning, which I don't remember by name right now. Uh, also, you can check out um, what's her name that that one uh, Christian woman who keeps L. making videos for no reason. Oh yeah, L. Uh, L L I S L. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and share the link to her video response to uh, Let me see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, L I S O Elohim. Uh, she made a very nice video about this whole stuff with Adidawa as well, which is worth a watch. Um, go check that out. And one uh, second, one second, one second, just for everyone here sharing the link right now. And uh, Oh, what are you, what are you sharing uh, just shared it. Apologetics Roadshow shared the link to L's video if anyone wants to watch something afterwards. Yo, yo, check it, check that out. Yeah, yo, yo, check, yo. It. <laughs> check it out. Uh, check out L I uh, I S O L E made a very interesting video, but only listen to them when it comes to stuff about Islam. Otherwise, uh, only stick to what I say on the nature of existence and the world and all that. 
and it looks like David is for some reason trying to say something. I don't know what what's really what he's trying no, to say. No, I'm here. good. I'll just let you uh, keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks everyone. Have a fantastic day. And as always. Wait a minute, where did the clip go? Oh, I thought you were gonna play a clip of one of our Dawa friends. Yeah. Thanks everyone again. And as always, stay away from Islam. Stay away from Islam. You heard the man.